Welcome to Entmoot Live. I've got the wrong background on. Welcome to Entmoot Live. Uh, I'm here uh, for the first time in quite some time for uh, a bit of a live chatter this evening. Uh, the if you don't know the the um, the chase theme tune, the quiz. Uh, it was it's a reference to the fact that I was on telly earlier. Not that I wasn't going to mention it very often, but I was on telly earlier um, and people have been making memes. We'll talk about that throughout the uh, course of the evening. But uh, first, uh, just to give you a vague idea of what we're up to tonight. Um, basically, 2023 has happened. It's in the past now. 2024 is ahead of us, but we're going to have a look back and a look forward. And when I say we, I mean me and the man, the one, the only battle camper. Alex Temple, welcome to the the stream. Howdy, thank you very much for having me on the stream. Oh, it's uh, brilliant to have you. I, I, I genuinely surprised you've taken the time tonight after the glory of your TV, your TV spotlight. Look, I mean, in in many ways, this is just an extension of uh, my prime time appearance on ITV One uh, in the UK. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, you know, this is just this is where yeah. everyone uh, uh, after watching that at five o'clock on, they're just gonna be like searching my name, looking up the internet, saying Harry, Harry Parker. Oh wow, this guy. Oh, and then they're gonna be here, and yeah. they'll realise what I'm all about clearly because I'm not. Or, or they'll say, "Wow, what what a climb down!" You know, yeah, <laughs> prime time TV to <laughs> live, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. But I mean, uh, I, I know j before we before we uh, uh, sort of get into everything that's been happening this evening, I know you have you have specifically said you avoided watching the chase specifically so that you can hear it directly from the horse's mouth. Is that right? Uh, exactly. So that's right. I said uh, so I could hear it from the horse's mouth, and because I don't have a TV license, and because I've never seen the chase, and I don't oh. know where to watch it. But yeah, so yeah, exactly. <laughs> but because of the horse's mouth thing, that's right. Mainly that. Yeah. Also, yeah. I'm slight. I don't know about everyone else watching, but I'm slightly terrified by the the door being slightly ajar behind you and the sort of empty hallway that's slightly dark and shadowy. So I just thought I'd introduce the concept of, of a terrifying figure walking past at some point during the course of the, the thing. Maybe we can all shout, it's behind you at some point. Oh, I really wish I'd uh, set this up now, like a little sort of, <laughs> a, a, like a guy on a track that can go past. <laughs> like, if there is a terrifying figure, it will be my dog. Uh, yes. That's why the door's ajar, you know. Terrifying indeed. Um, so uh, anyway, there you go. So uh, Alex, of course, from Battle Camper, uh, who uh, I'm sure everyone here watching tonight knows, uh, and I am on Entmoot. And uh, people may notice for the first time, uh, this is Entmoot Live, um, of course, named after the Entmoot podcast. This is I'm slowly changing my YouTube channel to Entmoot as well. Um, not that that really matters for people, but uh, hopefully it'll be easy to find in the future. Uh, currently, oh, it's no, I, I applaud. I applaud that change. It's, do you think uh, it's a strong move? It is. Whenever I tried to find your channel previously, I always just searched Entmoot anyway, and it always came up. So, you, you know, you've obviously got the SEO down already. Exactly. Um, but I just think like, yeah. maintain consistent branding. It's better. It's good. It's good. Exactly. The, the, what I really should have done is call my podcast something other than Entpoo, Ent, Entpoo, Ent, Entmoot, um, because Entpoo. that was the, my, my, the, the, the YouTube channel actually came first. But anyway, uh, I, I'll, let's uh, drop in and have a look at some of the people who are chatting on yeah. um uh, on the old things um uh, feel free we, we will talk about stuff later on but um i'll just see what what everyone's up to let me know in the comments that you hear that the sound is working i assume i assume it is fine uh, nobody's complaining yet um and and let me know what you're doing are you painting are you, are you you know what, what's cracking so uh flip is in there he can't wait that's good michael haskell well, evening to you likely to be joining late at 9 p.m uh, i think we'll probably still be going it depends on if alex has the stamina uh, to keep up with a, a you know an IT born professional like me, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll uh, do my very best. You, I'm sure you will. Uh, uh, Yen Elmo there sitting in a hotel room painting Dunland for a tournament in a week. So happy for some video to watch. Oh, oh brilliant! Uh, welcome along, Yen. Uh, Tom Marshall, brace yourself. The chase related puns and burns are coming. Excellent. I'm very excited for this. Uh, 3D games, war gaming, in, war gaming and terrain um, has to happen though, right? Of course. Uh, welcome along, Adam. Uh, J Max, Armies of Middle Earth. The Chasen had a hefty budget cut. Excellent. Um, who's this? Tom Marshall. Uh, I haven't been less harsh if I hadn't sold us down the river trying to be the new Cadbury's gorilla. Yeah. Oh, so there, there, were, there might be references to this over the course of the evening, Alex. Um, a number oh, of the, uh, I was going to say, a number of the memes, uh, if people uh, don't know, in the chase, the guy, the, the host, Bradley Walls, has like two questions that he asks you all the time, basically. The first one is, what are you going to spend the money on and what do you um, do for a hobby when you're not, you know, doing your work? And um, and I chose, and this was a very carefully cu cultivated thing, and I'm going to get my defence in now, because I, I know you've got a minute or 30 seconds or thereabouts to make 
something that he can make a joke about, right? So I, I obviously had the choice to do hobbying, Warhammer, all that sort of stuff. That would make a lot of sense. But I, I realised the path that that goes down leads Bradley Walsh into criticising Warhammer and making jokes about little toy soldiers and, oh, you paint little toy soldiers. And I knew that that is not good for the community. This is not the, the space to allow for a nuanced discussion about the merits of Warhammer. No, no. This is where he will prod it and poke and be, um, you know, make a bit of a cheap gag about it. Oh, that's a, that's a yeah. rubbish defence. I, I think that's a great defence. No, that's I'm a just... rubbish defence. You've got... Is... Failure to you—you you think that it's incapable of standing on its own two feet. You know, you would have been—you'd been in a space with with Henry Cavill, you know, talking live on TV about Warhammer. Instead, you're in a space with losers like, you know, musicians who like them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Who who likes anyone who would sing uh, on a channel? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, still, yeah, that was the reason. And I thought may, maybe if I if I appear on, you know chase the, the the best contestants of the year i've got a chance to come back you know because obviously i'd make it to that but anyway um, um in case people don't know i didn't win any money um but anyway that, that was the money on but i thought that might be a bit i would have spent <laughs> I, I i would have spent the money on uh soundproofing or so i said but reality is i'd have spent it on toy soldiers um so <laughs> anyway uh yeah that's that's part of the reason for it um so hence the gag about the cabbage griller uh gayton's in uh frederick's in uh, Frederick says, is that the Nazgul that was chasing the hobbits off the road? Chasing. I see what you did there, Frederick, because the uh, holding screen was the uh, the Nazgul. We'll talk about that later. Uh, Hamish is welcoming us to Entmoot. Uh, so many memes on GBHL. Yes, we'll look at some later. The memes are the highlight of my day, says Battle Camper. Don't know who that is. A douchebag, I think. Uh, and then, man, I just remembered I got here in just in time. Excellent. Well done, old gaffer. Um, when's the resin pour? Excellent. Uh, the cattle bumper. Yes. He's in Team at Tiberius. Evening, evening to Team at Tiberius. Um, I, I wrote a blog for him uh, in the run up to Christmas. There's lots of uh, lots of cool stuff in his blog. Actually, it's really good. Um, do check that out. He painted trees in the Ent. <laughs> oh, he painted Ent in the trees. Very good. On telly, Crime Watch. Hey, nice gag. Uh, Park Shill, of course. I do like that one. Yeah, I mean, that one, I think I'm named that in one of the chats, uh, one of the, really? uh, the group <laughs> chats, which is fine. Um, do you have an IMDb page yet? No, but I, I have uh, applied for IMDb Pro uh, Plus Premium for, for that purpose. Um, <laughs> you that up? I, I don't know. <laughs> Can you do it? Yeah, you do it. Uh, the German version is called Gefragged, Gejagged, Asked, Questioned, Hunted. Hmm, interesting. We all know what Alex keeps back there. Interesting. I want to know. Uh, Cameron Lameron Core 07. I don't know. Some of these. I'm very pro channel rebrand, says Frederick. Excellent. Uh, what's up, guys? Tim, well, welcome along. Uh, Tim has a camp. Um, Tim has a camp. Does he have anywhere that Battle Camper can stay? Does he have a camp that you can? Tim has a camp. <laughs> no. I mean, at least I've got, if you laugh, then it's fine. Uh, also, very pro. Yeah, I've, 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 I've cultivated my fake laugh over my long, yes. <laughs> really long yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Oh no, so this is a good one. Um, Frederick asked whether I should do. So you know, um, people on YouTube do that thing where they go, um, "This is the end," and they have like a they have like a a, a screenshot of or like a, a thumbnail of them going. Mm. Do you think mm. I should do that for Ent Mood, the no. YouTube channel? Do you not think? I mean, I, the, the thing is, I, I think you can do the thing, but then what do you put in the actual video? I don't know. I, I'm changing name. I I would okay. I would never talk to you again. It's too, it's too much. It's too, so there it's are too upsides to this. I've idea. got too much respect for you. That, that's, that's the kind of thing. You know, I'd expect I'd expect the Lockies and the uh, and the Adams of this world. To... <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, yeah. J Mac would do it. J, J Mac would do it. No. Absolutely would. J Mac would do anything though. I'm surprised. No, to be fair, J Mac would not because he's still got the um, the logo of his uh, YouTube channel saying "Armies of Arda," even though it's not been called that for a very long time. <laughs> um, so uh, he's he's proper old school. He loves he just just all for the content. I mean, have you seen that YouTube the video he's done recently? Did what, you see uh, the, the astronaut? Man of John, of course. Yeah, it's absolutely. I mean, it's a work of art. It genuinely it's a work is. Of art. It's yeah, actually one hundred percent a work of yeah, art. Yeah, uh, and and you know, obviously, everyone should go and watch that after uh, they've enjoyed our live stream until sort of the late hours. Um, think, but I yeah, think something I really like about it is the idea that someone will have discovered his channel for the first time, 
Mm-hmm. Um, and the first video they'll, so, you know, be, they'll be like, oh, so they'll meet someone at a tournament uh, yes. or in YouTube search like recommended videos. And they'll mm-hmm. be like, oh, cool, a, a Middle Earth video, a Middle Earth channel. You know, I need, I need some more Middle Earth content. And the first video they'll watch will be <laughs> Base Commander John and they'll just be <laughs> utterly perplexed. <laughs> yeah, I, I I mean, I'd like, yeah, I think in, in many ways, if you've never watched any video by J-Max Armies of Middle Earth, Start with go and watch that. And then you will, you'll, I think you'll, you'll, you'll sort of, if you don't like it, then you probably probably won't like the rest of his stuff because there's all some cracking content on there that's just mad. But um, but yeah, you you need to just get into that into that vibe because it is so good, so good. Uh, anyway, Space Commander John, all for us. Uh, so uh, let's see. Sean Clark is in. Welcome, Sean. How are you doing? Uh, Tim has a camp. Um, says was listening to new podcast drop today. Love the rebranding. Look at this, all this rebranding love. I love it. It's very boring content, but it's great that, that people are liking it uh, in, ter- in terms of that sort of stuff. Um, J Matt's going to rebrand to the chase. Good work. <laughs> Frederick is eating soup. Thank you, Frederick. Building Goblin Town terrain again, says uh, Ad. Excellent. I'm glad to be the accompaniment. Um, the, the stuff that he's, he's producing Adam, is absolutely outstanding. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah it's really, 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 really good. Uh, Hamish is painting his treasure seeker for this weekend. Now, I completely forgot um, to bring all my stuff upstairs to watch um, to. Um, Uh, to paint along with but at the weekend going to a a tournament in Belfast or just next to Belfast in Bangor in Northern Ireland very excited Tim Elwes and I going along and they have a a treasure seeker you basically uh, the Sean Spall is organizing the tournament he's got all these mad rules about uh, you've got a model that counts as a more goblin captain but it's a treasure seeker and then you've got to find these little treasure things then you get like boosts for your cap your treasure seeker it's all this so and they're encouraging us to redesign stuff and my one is the terminator from the terminator films because why not because he, you know, he hunts things down film crossovers recently you know what yeah this is a, it's only only really happened in the last month but i'm all there for it i mean let's be honest there aren't any other mesbg models coming out these days are there so no, well, something I'm sure we'll be, I'm sure we'll be getting onto. There was, a, there was a reason I did put the uh, the diorama as the uh, as the thing, but anyway, uh, Hamish, I'm looking forward to seeing the picture. Uh, uh, Callum, uh, good evening. Currently converting a mounted Erkin brand. Mounted it. Oh, you, oh, that's interesting. Okay, I'd be intrigued to see what you're converting it into or from. Um, old gaffer, I, I just decided to change the profile and name. Huh, fair enough. Um, Sean Clark, I'm soundproof. Yeah, okay, closet nerd. Very good. Love it. Tom Marshall, trying to decide what to take to scouring. Scouring. You're going scouring, Alex. Is that right? I am going scouring, yeah. I didn't get tickets this year. I was far too slow. I I'm, 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 I'm gutted, to be honest. Uh, uh, I thought it was going to be a big... I don't, I don't think uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the classics aren't going. You know. I, uh, I think... I, I know, because it, it, it wasn't in the Great British Hobbit League last year, either. Yeah, of course. Um, it hasn't been in, at, at any point. A couple of years. Before I even really knew what the GBHL was, I saw um, the 2022 <clears throat> event get posted. Yeah. And then I saw your your comment. But I'd, you know, I'd known you because you'd invited me to Imps, but that was basically it, because yeah. it was the second event I went to. Mm-hmm. And uh, and you said, why isn't it in the GBHL? Why isn't it in the GBHL? Um, and... At the time, I was like, I don't, I don't, I didn't, I didn't know enough to even really kind of conceive why, why that was a big deal at all. Now I'm like, I am a bit, I am a bit, um, a bit gutted. It's not the GBHL, yeah. I yeah. know. Um, it's a shame. It's a shame. It's a, it is a shame because it is one of the the biggest events of the year, and um, I know some people really don't like um, or like the fact that it's not in the uh, GBHL, and they're like, oh well, I don't want all these tryhards to turn up and blah blah, blah to try and win league points. But actually, the, the, it was probably the the most cheesy event I've been to in a long time last year. I, I just I love it. I mean, I lo- it's like I said, it's, I've been to it twice in a row. Um, Steve just just absolutely makes it. Yeah, uh, you know his his. <clears throat> enthusiasm is infectious mm-hmm. in the first year he live streamed you know at all six games at least one was live streaming in the studio yep. he was running around getting it to work always just so happy and so like enthusiastic about it he's got those you know the, the tables are absolutely superb at least mm-hmm. at one end of the room um love the venue last year i just had an absolute blast i love steve so so i've got no complaints and i'll keep going um but um, yeah must be be, be uh I've come, I've come I've come to quite like that they're, they're, they're in a Jewish show, you know. Particularly mm. since they don't go to that many events and particularly don't do very well in them. Uh, you know, having one yeah. event that uh, that isn't <clears> in it means it's one what you know it's, it's like one sort of fifth or sixth of my chances that year to 
uh, to improve my standing. Yeah, that's true. But I, I mean, you're right. Uh, uh, Steve, Steve's fantastic. Uh, he's a great TO, and the prizes are brilliant. Or you know, everything, everything is uh, is what you would expect. Cool. And you know, hey, that this year he's he's like gone. He's now a professional chef and all this sort of stuff. Who knows? The food catering may be out. Yeah, of the world. yeah. And so if he, I watch it. I follow. You know, if, if anyone doesn't follow his, if anyone's remotely interested in his cooking channel, Steve, Steve's cooking channel is called. Um, I'm so sorry. The dog is currently trying to eat a tin of old peas from um, my bag, <laughs> bin bag over there. Uh, yeah, the, 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 his um, <laughs> his channel, I can you can cook, is 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 awesome. And the food the, I, it's, it's like it's magic. I, like, I, to be fair, pork. On. Sorry, no, carry on. I, I was some pork yesterday, and like he just, the, it's like oh, this is a simple thing I cooked my family last night, and it's like this like potato thing that's like a swirl and you know it's got like kind of caramelizing stuff on the top and then even the like the cabbage is like done in a little sort of fancy pattern and it'll, it the, it fits in a little sort of tower stack thing uh, absolutely ridiculous ridiculous I mean, it does sound, I, I, i've seen i've, I've seen I, I follow him on instagram i haven't watched any of his youtube videos i'll be honest because i'm just not interested in um, looking at, at recipes uh, stuff on youtube um but the, the the Instagram is amazing. Like all the the stuff he creates is amazing. So yeah, well, and on top yeah. of everything else, he does, it's two. It's also it's just two very disparate passions. You know, yeah. Uh, that's why it always interests me. Always interests me what 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 other things the people in the chat today do. Like what what's if you've got a second hobby, what's your second hobby? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that'd be yeah. great. Yeah, get, yeah. Drop your comments below. Second hobby, if you have one, uh, what is it? And and don't just say playing Warhammer Forty K or something. That that would not count. Uh, <laughs> say playing say playing the drums. Lie like like. Harry <laughs> hey, I, I, you can if you are you not, not, not right now. Search on YouTube. Not uh, you know you can search Harry Parkill on YouTube, and you may well find uh, videos of me drumming. It, they are quite old to be fair. Um. Anyway, sorry. The the reason we started going and down that tangent about cooking was yeah, tom has happened. asked he's trying to decide what to take to scouring and whatever he takes he needs to build a new display board for help him decide is it rivendell rohan or easterlings what do you, what's your media what do you immediately want to vote for and i'll tell rohan. you if you're right or wrong if you've not played a rohan army before rohan I'm I'm afraid you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm I'm going based on the display board. I'd love to see a Rivendell display board. That would be amazing. It's, that would be cool. I, I'm, yeah. that's, but you're right. The right hand that's fair. That is very fair. Key, can you please? So the dog is, is trying to turn off my computer now. So we're just excellent try, work. Raising her out there. Uh, yeah, yeah. Display board. I appreciate Rohan display boards can be a, a tad dull, unless yeah. of course you happen to be Damien. Yeah, uh, Damien and, and, and you Shout make. Out. Uh, a giant um, display for the arrival of, of, of the Riders of Aymer, uh down the hill into uh, Helm's Deep. That was obviously absolutely incredible. Uh, but it's just, uh, if, if they're the regular sort of 2D Riders of Rohan ones, they can, they can be a little bit dull. Yeah, yeah. Um, Although, I mean, I've, uh, uh, Julian Hammond, I don't know whether he's in the chat, but um, Julian mm -hmm. Hammond created an amazing Pelennor Fields board, which um, on the face of it, you think, well, what, what is there on the Pelennor? But um, it helps that Julian's like one of the best painters in the... Uh, I was say, Ju Ju Julian's painting sells <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really yeah. Does. And uh, But he's also got, you know, uh, littered it with like corpses of, of Moranans and they're like falling over and they've got arrows sticking out their eyes. That, that sort of stuff's cool. So you I could just could something to be said, which I'm very bad at listening to this advice. There's something to be said about taking a simple concept and doing it well. Yes. Um, yes. It's, it's I'm like you, I think complex and then like it all crumbles because it doesn't look quite look yeah. as good as I've one, yeah. I'm always like that. And, and actually, you know, it's it's exactly the same in that way in everything we do. It's like I remember um, um a guitar teacher, my old guitar teacher telling me it's it's hard to play, you know, one one note uh, well sorry like what one transition between notes well yeah then it's to sort of shred badly um but the, the the former will sound better and i think it's exactly the same painting you know it, um you you see some people i remember i remember what i was playing 40k and i, I had this elder army and i was really pleased with it and i thought it looked, it looked great but i tried to do like all the thorns and things like this and yeah. you know sort of, sort of some free handing for my wild ten elder if people don't know they've, they've, they've covered in thorns and this other guy turned up with a blood angels army which substituted red space marines and all he'd done was the basic concepts of red very well. Very, very even base coat, nice pin wash, uh, and nice edge highlighting. Uh, I had come along with like these sort of like different like shading highlights and a bit of like layering and some freehanding. Mm -hmm. His army, by far and away, was more striking, looked nicer, just was generally more pleasant to look at because he'd just gone like, I'm going to do this one simple thing and do it very well and come out with a very clean and neat paint job. I, I'm I'm going to do a rare thing right now. I'm going to actually give you a compliment. So um, oh my prepare Christ. yourself. <laughs> um, but you you say you did a simple. Uh, took a simple concept and did it well. Um, 
and you did that in this. This is your this is your um, uh, army that you won the best painted for at the GBHL finale, uh, which I uh, which you know was was well well deserved. It's Christmas. Thank you. It's a it's a it's a you know a Hobbit hole and Christmas folks gathered in in the snow for a Christmas party. That was done well and it was very simple thank you. really when you think about it i mean that that was that that's a probably a good, a good example then and firstly thank you it's, it's very kind um but that was one where i was like oh i'm gonna put a pond in and i'm gonna yeah. put a uh, a little fountain uh oh maybe i'll put a little tent up and things like this and it's like actually no no stop put a little hobbit hole on on a field yeah and then just crack on just and, and, just, <laughs> and also get your mate to do all the green stuffing <laughs> and that, I mean, that, and yeah, the models you showed the models you showed they were all me yeah they were to be fair i mean yeah. chris powell if he, i don't know if he's in chat but um it, i don't i wouldn't have won without I, I do feel like i cheated you you'd have won if i didn't have him oh, well, I, I did the sort of like neatening up bits which were nice uh but um but he came and he did like the bows on the presents and, and he figured out how to do the ornaments on tree mm. and the star and the uh, and the baubles and the and the tinsel, which looked fantastic. And you know, I I'm a I'm a moron. I I don't like building. I like painting. I don't like to build. I, I'll, I'll take uh, that. A quote, Alex Simple. I'm a moron. I'm a moron. One hundred percent. You're welcome. Um, um, but and yeah. I, so, so I I I broke a component of Thranduil. I think I um I broke his hand off after I after I'd done the green stuffing. I'd done the mitten. I'd done the 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 um candy cane. And then I snapped it off, and I just couldn't get couldn't fix it. And so he was like, uh, "Well, I'll, I'll just get this." Um, uh i'll get the copper wire drill it in bend it around and then you can rebuild so we had to pull the old mitten off but then you can rebuild the mitten around the copper wire mm. so that it forms the, the the fingers on one side and the thumb on the other side and then you'll get a strong bond genius genius i could um, not have done that i couldn't it's, it's very no he's, he's brilliant i mean he built if you if anyone checks out his instagram um uh it's been quiz to 29 i think um, I mean, if you just search Minquister on Instagram, um, you know, he's built an entire chaos war mummock for, um, uh, for, or elephants, whatever it is, for fantasy from scratch, just, just from plasticine, just, just built this, this war mummock with a howder and, and it looks incredible. And like, you know, it's the thing stands sort of like, <laughs> like probably eight, nine inches tall. Wow, that sounds amazing. It's I incredible. definitely want to check that out. Inquisitor, Inquisitor nine on it. On, 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 that's Inquisitor with an M at the beginning. Oh right, okay, min. Okay, mini quiz. I get it. Uh, right, so there you go. So that's so Tom. Um, if you would take Alex's advice, it'd be Rohan because Rohan is a fun army to play with. My advice, Rivendell, because it'd be a, it. It's the potential for a beautiful display board. There's lots of really nice terrain that's uh, um, Rivendelli. Uh, let us know what you what you go with. Uh, Julian Hammond is in, and he says checked on Amazon and can't find any black mint Imperials. What am I doing wrong? Ha ha! That's a reference to a question. The um the the uh, the the chaser got wrong. He said, "What you know? What the question was? What color are mint imperials?" And Alex, what color are mint imperials? White. Yes, they are. They are white. And he got that wrong. He was like, "What?" what, what? So there you go. What's a moron? Uh, I know. I know. And yeah, you he lost did. for that idiot. I can't it. <laughs> <laughs> Set myself up for that one, didn't I? He did. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, J Max says, uh, "You shat it." I, I don't know. <laughs> Of course he did, yeah. Course he did. I mean, this is very typical of J-Max stuff. Uh, clutching at straws there, mate. I'm not quite... Oh, that was probably the, the, the reference to the drums thing. The drums over the Warhammer thing. Um, he wouldn't dare criticise Warhammer. We have a Henry Cavill. That is true. That is true. Rubbish defence, traitor, unsubbing, <laughs> all this all this sort of thing. What can, when can we expect... Oh, this is good. When can we accept Alex on Ice Road Ice Truckers? Road truckers. <laughs> in a heartbeat, mate. In a heartbeat, I'd do that. That'd be amazing. There you go. Losers, musicians, who likes them? Says the guy with a bunch of guitars behind him. Ruffle. Oh, yeah. I didn't even look at the guitars. Oh, behind. <laughs> <laughs> Ruffle, indeed. Uh, battle streams in Middle Earth. Oh, look. The, the guy on the left really looks like the guy in the chase tonight who thought Vienna was a country. <laughs> yeah, God, what an idiot. That, yeah. Yeah, to be fair, it, it, in the in the heat of the moment, you just have to say things. And that's generally what I'm quite good at is just saying things and filling gaps. So, so um, I, I have a question for you. Go on. Is, I feel like, I, I always feel like, you know, people sit at home, they're like, oh, ha, ha, you got that wrong, what a moron. And um, I feel like, it's like that, those questions where it's like, okay, you've got 30 seconds to name 10 films that begin with the letter R. And mm -hmm. you're like, you, you know, you know a thousand of them, but you just mm -hmm. freeze up. Is that, is that what it's like? Do you, you, are you like, I know the answer to this question. I, okay. I think part of it for me is that you've got a clock counting down in front of you. So the main thing is you're like, oh my God, I've got to say something. And if I don't, if you don't immediately recall the answer, it's like, say something just, and something just comes to your head and, you know, uh, yeah, Vienna, obviously not a country, famously. In fact, I think you can see me mouthing it afterwards, like, 
I'm not confused. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> same with another one. I think um, oh, it was, there was a question. I can't remember what it was. It was like a something like "Tis the season." Podcast. Oh, the, the podcast, yeah, yeah. So if someone says, "Oh, you know what? Uh, they, what Christian festival is Tis the season or dedicated to?" and note note that it was filmed in March, so it was running up to Easter. So I thought Lent. Um, obviously, "Tis the season" implies a high level of Christmas content. Um, had had I been asked that question at this time of year, Christmas is fresh in the mind. I would have said yes, but I should have got it from Tiz. But I just heard Christian Festival, didn't know the answer immediately. Just named guest, bam, move on to the next thing. But hey, hey. this is the problem as well. That Christmas seems like the easy answer. Maybe, yeah, yeah, but I don't think in the in the time you have for that sort of stuff. I think you have thirty seconds to answer as many questions as you got to get each one you get correct a thousand pounds. If you don't immediately know the the answer to the pocket just say something and move on to the next one you might get a thousand pounds on it so anyway that's that's my my logic which uh has yielded me a grand total of zero pounds uh so <laughs> who knows uh but yeah uh Richly thank you uh, i assume that it's damien or it might be steve uh commenting in uh welcome into the the show um cameron law says i'm a tabletop war gamer say it loud and proud i am loud and proud but my defense earlier don't want the cheap gags don't like the cheap gags if there's time and nuance, like on Graham Norton, plenty of time to defend it. <laughs> time uh, and nuance. <laughs> two words never previously associated with Graham Norton. <laughs> <laughs> Vienna is a cake. Uh, I think it's a Viennese world you're talking about, isn't it? Biscuit, John. You nonce. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Green Tree is in. Hello. Uh, welcome. Welcome. J Mac is a Jaffa cake. Um, Tam has a camp. Uh, you don't want to be staying in my camp, mate. I'm German. Oh, that's dark. That is dark. But I, I quite like the edge of humour. Thank you. Uh, Battleship is Middle Earth. Don't do the thing. Don't ever do that thing. That thing is the worst. I don't know what that thing is, but thank it's you. We lingered too long. That's the problem on, on previous topics. Now Yeah, now we're just, we're just all the topics. Um, if people would like to comment anything related to, please uh, open the, the, the comment with, in reference to, and then type in detail what you're referring to and then follow it up with a with a quick witty comment. Thank you. Um, not that that <laughs> John just can't figure out how to change anything on his channel. That's great. Uh, just joined Painting Platinum Proxies. The official ones are rubbish. Yeah, to be fair, they are. They are actually rubbish. I just saw um, there's a group 3D printing miniatures for Lord of the Rings or something like that. And they're, they're running a competition to see... Um, to see uh, who's going to be the new banner image. And the previous one is uh, the old the pl uh, Black Numenorians, and they are very nice, to be fair. Um, and I know, I think you're you're not you're not horrendously against 3D printed miniatures, are you, Alex? Not at all. I've got, um, got I'm doing a load of um, 3D printed Raw Guard. Um, first time, it will be the first time I've ever painted 3D uh, printed miniatures. Mm -hmm. uh, I accidentally broke my mounted Grima earlier. Um, oh, and I've man. literally just ordered some Berserkers as well. I mean, Berserk, it, I I don't know whether we, we want to linger on this topic now. Um, but, I guess I, I think we already are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, start the you coming with 3D. Okay. <laughs> go on. The longer we go without a significant number of official releases, the, the more acceptable it's going to be. Uh, but also, I actually just I just refuse to pay for uh, the mounted raw guard when it's yeah. like it's just like they're so they're, they're they're unjustifiably expensive. No good reason. They look like crap. Uh, and the 3D printed ones fraction of the cost and look absolutely fantastic. The other thing I kind of think is is I feel like I would I'd be more queasy about it if it was Games Workshop's IP. I know it's a bit it's a bit silly, but I almost feel like um, if it's their IP, they do what they want with it. But if they didn't have it, then someone else would have it. Mm. And if someone else, like so, for example, like Atomic Mass, like whatever you think of them as a studio, they they pump out some really high quality miniatures for their Star Wars games. Uh, and it's like maybe you know if someone else had it, we'd get more miniatures for it. But then I suppose we wouldn't have the, the, the fantastic rule set. Um, I kind yeah. of feel like it's something that that Games Workshop is going to have to get, gonna have to get used to. If it, They're going to have to crack on, on, crack on, and do something this year. That is that is going to be the bulk of the topic later on. So actually, uh, yeah. well worth your comments uh, later on. Uh, right. Let's just bash through what we've got. Um, uh, Jay, so watch the original. Not quite sure that's for heart. Can't start on that too. Heresy. Watch, I think he means watch the original um, Space Commander John because what we were talking about. Was oh Space yeah, Commander the first one was quite. Yeah, that was good. Cool. Yeah. Also, if you haven't watched it, watch the the one where he eats the old uh, chocolate bar. Definitely watch that. That is well worth eating. I think that Definitely. was for a thousand subscribers or something like that. It's actually properly gross, but uh, really good. Uh, Mick Barclays, welcome to the thing. Starstruck. I assume something to do with me being on the chase. 
Uh, he oh, no, he's talking about me, actually. Ah. <laughs> 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 that is probably true. Uh, you know, so, so, oh, it sounds like a bangor of a, an event. Way very good. Uh, it should be good. Currently building the old Warhammer Plastic Fortress. Ooh, nice. Ooh, that is exciting. I would love a an old Warhammer Plastic Fortress. I had one when I was a kid. I think it was probably... I got... The first th Warhammer I got was off a of market, but the first... Uh, sorry, a, a car boot sale, but... I, the first thing I like, I was bought as a like a present or something like that, which was an official brand new box, was the um, Empire versus Orcs fantasy um, box mm. set. I can't remember which era that was um, or edition of uh, Warhammer Fantasy was, but it was Ace. And the next thing I got was the Warhammer Fortress thing, and it was well, not the it might have just been the castle or one of the towers or something like that, but it was Ace. And I remember it, I couldn't get it to stick together with my child child hands so uh, it, it was always had like walls peeling off a little bit at the side so i would love to have another bash at it uh, maybe they'll do it on a made to order or something um, oh, that would sell like yeah you know, i think it would um, and it, i mean i know that they'd have to because it's like a, a big plastic thing that they'd have to probably dedicate quite a lot of time to the the uh, you know the, the molding or whatever it of it the, the but, thing is sorry no go on i was finished please. i saw one in the flesh quite recently mm. uh and I hate to say, I hate to burst the big nostalgia bubble. Um, I, th I think what it has going for it is a lot of nostalgia. Yeah. Um, I don't think it stood the test of time as well as other GW kits. Like some of the some of the fancy terrain, I've noticed like some of the really old ones, like um, the tower that you might be talking about. There's one that's like it's like a it's like a part house, part watchtower. Uh, and I thought I always liked it because it's like it kind of sells a bit of a story in a mm. single model about um, living in like the Warhammer Empire. Because it's like you know that's where you live. But you, you've got to protect yourself from kind of constant threat kind of thing. And it was a very beautiful model. And it stood the test of time. And it's and uh, I would still buy it now. And I've noticed it's been in some of the promo shots for um, uh, for the return of the old world. Um, um, Fortress, actually, I think, is, has unfortunately kind of been superseded by a lot of the, the really amazing, again, 3D prints you can get. They've got much better right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's interesting. And um, interesting, Craig, let, me, let us know how your fortress that, is Sorry to go. dump on Craig's. No, no, <laughs> well, he'll like, probably yeah. say, I don't believe anything that that battle camper man is saying. Uh, this all, uh, this port fortress is amazing. Uh, Sean cool. Clark's cancelled his ticket for scouring this year, sadly. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, no, uh, how come? I don't know. He hasn't That's given a shame, that I remember last year, Sean, I drew you first round <clears> and then they redrew it. I was very excited driving in. So I think Graham was sitting next to me in the van, my friend, and he said, um, oh, you've, you've drawn Sean. I was like, That's fantastic. I've never played Sean. Really wanted to. And then they redrew it now to play someone else. Sometimes. Callum Mosman uh, managed to get Erkin Brand on foot from eBay, but not the mount. Ah, uh, I see. So you're making it the conversions that we're talking. Steve is making doing food stuff. Yes, he is. My plan is to use a plastic round and then green stuff the extra details and use a spare AMA helmet so he stands out from the normal red shield. Sorry, I'm burping. I've got a 0% alcohol drink that I have in here. It's very exciting. Uh, best event of the year. First time I went to in like 2019, 2020. I think I went earlier than that. I think it was, I think I was go I've been going for like four or five years. So it'd be the first one that I've missed in a long, long time. So it's, it's a real shame. Oh, and Gayton's going to it as well. <clears throat> booked his flight from, for scouring looking forward to discovering it sad to hear you won't be attending yeah it, it, and it wasn't a di it wasn't like i decided i don't want to go it was that um i just i just missed the the announcement and they sold out so quickly are like, you on the list are you on the reserves uh no i don't think i put it on in the end because i just I, I i i can't remember why but um anyway yeah that's a shame uh yeah it's a shame uh, but again it would be nice to see you again um uh, his cooking channel is called The Dog is Eating a Can of Old Peas. That's <laughs> nice. Excellent. Uh, Hamish, there's other pastimes. I would watch that channel. <laughs> yeah, I would, yeah. Uh, other pastimes include bullying J-Mac. Yeah, okay. Other hobbies. Yeah, we're on to that. Uh, Rob Mycock says... <laughs> I'm so sorry. Bob. Done. <laughs> that may that may that may well be your actual name, and I'm sure it is, but it definitely sounded quite funny. Rob Mycock. Um Hi, hi guys. Uh, welcome along. I don't actually know you personally, but Rob, uh, welcome along to the stream. Apologies for the gag at your name. Uh, Frederick Schultz says, baby Justin Bieber cover, drum cover, lol. You found it. Frederick Schultz has found my cover of baby on uh, by Justin Bieber. What a drums. bold choice. I'm I know, you, I know it you, you preferred to admit or get close to admitting you did a, a drum cover of baby by Justin Bieber than you than play. <clears throat> That's like the one piece of music. That I think would have would have would have attracted more vitriolic hate than the toy soldiers thing. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. I, I also did a, a Plan B song, but um, yeah, I don't know why I chose to do that. I just I think hey, at the I'm, time I'm I was just... you choose. I've got a horrible scent, taste of music. I, I'm sure to a lot of people. So yeah, but I mean, it is to be fair. Universally, "Baby" by Justin Bieber is quite 
you know, it's a strong choice. But it's a good, it's a good, there's a good, some good drumming in there. Anyway, uh, second hobby for Gaten is uh, Carnival. Big thing here in Basel. Hmm. I'd really like to know a bit more about that because to me, Carnival is something you go and visit, but is, is maybe there's a bit more um, that I'm not knowing uh, about here. Uh, I'd be interested. Oh, here we go. Look, we're getting the second hobby, some good ones. Um, Tom Russell is Hornby, just like a Hogwarts theme build. Oh, wow. Tom, I hope to see that on your, on your Facebook group, on Facebook uh, group, the uh, Thrifty Builds. That's that's awesome. Love, Yeah, I'd love to see that. That sounds amazing. Uh, Hogwarts yeah. themed. I, I, I just got, um, I know it's a slight distraction, but I just got my nephew for his uh, Christmas present, a Thomas the Tank Engine themed set thing. Uh, so he's, he's only three years old, bless him, but he has a little, he had a little train set already. And I, I found out that the uh, it's basically discontinued the style because they basically release a new set every couple of years so that the the old tracks don't mesh together like that so because they're the bastards and um, but <laughs> <laughs> I, essentially uh, so i went onto the interwebs and found a set that would fit in with his and not only was it a set but it was something called a volcano drop thing Ooh, that's so you've got lovely. actual thomas the tank engine in, in, up till now he only had one of the lesser engines um and you can put a little drop of water in it and when you fire the battery up it steams, and my God, Christmas morning when we put that drip of water in, turned it on. He went wild with enthusiasm. So I'm very, I'm all there for the train stuff at the moment because I thought that was that was a very wholesome moment. So I, I, I'd love to see a Hornby massive version of it. So looking forward to seeing that, Tom. Um, old Gatha says he's painting some Gondor Rangers, the last step to finishing an Osgiliath army. Very exciting. Uh, Nick Taylor says he's doing Rivendell, uh, uh, or maybe that was a vote for the Rivendell. Oh, for Rivendell, yeah. Vote, yeah. yeah. I'll take Rivendell for five, Bradley. Yeah. Um, next stream, I expect to see a figure passing by that door. Alex, yeah, we're all excited that, by that. I haven't seen anything just yet, although keep an eye out. Um, Mind me walking downstairs. Um, we should do that as well, yeah. Um, given uh, Here we go. Given all the pressure, Michael Bradford said, welcome a lot, Michael. Uh, given all the pressure, et cetera, you're facing, you did a cracking job. Truly a ruby amongst opals. I think that might be a reference to the fact that I got the colour of a ruby and an opal wrong. Um, <laughs> I think you said a green, it was like, name a, a, a red, I don't know, a red gemstone. And it was, I said opal and it was a ruby. Anyway. So that's actually a savage burn. Disguise. It was It was actually uh, disguised as a really nice burn. comment, but, but burned, yeah, a very good. Um, nice work. Oi, oi, you lucky people, says Mark Hansen. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess I guess we are. I don't know why, but thank you. Um, property is theft, comrades. <laughs> Must be 3D printing. Uh, ah, yes, comrade, my communist friend. Dog, says old gaffer. Booked a holiday without checking the calendar. Oh, okay, fair enough. That's a reason for him not going to thingy. Uh, what's the key doing? The key is, was wagging its tail earlier. Now, we, now she's just sat there. Uh, uh, the, the, the cat's on the desk. They're, they're coexisting, which is nice. Uh, Rob, uh, here we go. Um, Rob may 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 he yuck? Spelt the English way, our resident blogger. Um, I don't know who Rob. What I don't know who that who that's some reference to, but I know Rob. I I, I recognise the name from one of the blogs. But um, anyway, there you go. Gollum's gamers. Ah, oh, here we go. Uh, hey. I don't know which one that is. Is that Elliot Schilling? Or probably he runs the channel vaguely, but it might be one of the others. Uh, glad to hear you play the drums. I've also been drumming for over fifteen years. We should have a drum off. That would be a a YouTube hit. I would think uh, it would. It, that would be that. That'd be the next big thing. We could drum along to Lord of the, the Rings. Next Gangnam style. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, um, you can see how, how how up to date my cultural references are. That's that's the last like big video <laughs> I'm aware of. <laughs> I think it's also probably one of the biggest still ever. So I think you're first to hit a billion views. I believe so, yes. Uh I see Mr. Bradford, aka Mr. Beast's number one fan, has arrived. Excellent. Uh Rob my cock, it is in me indeed, Mike. Uh, my cock was my premarital surname. For some reason, my wife insisted on translating it into Irish when we got married. I don't know why. Okay. There you go. Lovely. Uh, Rob Mycock. Oh, sorry. Rob Mycock equals Rob Mycock. I, I get it now. I get it. So that's 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 what it is. Excellent. So so I guess Mycock is how you pronounce M-A-I-G-H. Excellent. We've got to the end of the comments. And it's all about robbing my cock. So brilliant. Apologies <laughs> for multiple gags about your name, Rob. Uh, but thank you very much. So that brings us, I guess, rather neatly to the topic of the day. Topic so, the day. well, the, we've basically got two topics and people can obviously keep commenting. But um, we're going to essentially say uh, f uh, from here on out, I would like your kind of your review of the year. So uh, 2023 in MESBG. That's what we're going to be talking about for the next 
I don't know, however long we can go on for. Um, and then we'll talk about 2024 for a bit. But um, I guess I'm going to start things off by briefly running through all of the, So this is going to take some time, briefing, running through all of the models uh, like the games coffee, workshop. Like. Uh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, you got it. Could, could take a time. Um, so all the models we, that were released this year. So I'll, I'll run through them. I'm gonna. I, so uh, we got there. I got there. We've done it. Right. Okay. So that's that. You've got um, the head. The head. Oh God, no, that's the not statue. that's terrain. Terrain doesn't count. Terrain doesn't count. Okay. Uh, it's not <laughs> actual toys, is it? So, um, but I mean, so the, the fact. Obviously, I'm taking the piss a little bit, but generally. I mean, this has got to be a disappointment. These two things are the things that we've had this year, right? I mean, how, how do you feel about this, Alex? And I want, yeah, you, to, uh, you, know, I want you to so, be really honest here. So, okay, really honest. What I'm not going to do, and what, what I think I think the, prob the, the problem the community can have is moralising over this. Hmm. Making this an issue. Try, I, don't, I don't think the speculation as to why we haven't had releases is, is, is particularly helpful. I don't think, you know, I, I definitely don't think it's helpful when people get into a all conspiracy tinfoil hat stuff you know it's games which are trying to screw over can, the I, can i just stop you there alex i'm really wanting people to get into that in the comments <laughs> well, they, 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 <laughs> i know i joke i joke um why i'm opening but, it up i want all the crazy stuff no no go but on. uh mm. i think it is perfectly acceptable to be mortified mm. and I, I i i get some people like what you know you see comments i can think of a, a few people who i who i like very much and respect who will say well you've got a big pile of shame just paint what you've got you know what yeah. It, it's vain it's consumeristic i like new toys i like it when they announce them i like it you know i didn't i i i have no intention of getting the new faramir or whatever any, anytime particularly soon but i like the fact that it exists and i like seeing it on the table uh one day i'll get the new witch king i haven't bought that yet i'm not painted it yet because i'm not doing an angmar army but i love seeing the new witch king turn up because it looks fantastic um and all the miniatures that i have bought that have been new have always jumped right to the top of my list yes yeah, tree beard yeah. i've painted twice now and i'm planning on doing a third i've painted uh you know i got i've got two elrons i did it once i really enjoyed it i'm doing another one because i think i can do better uh, that wouldn't happen with an older miniature where i'm mm. like oh christ i've just got to the end of it and i'm glad it's over um theodin and and uh, Amen. uh Sorry, Emma and, and your first, 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 first model, wasn't he? That he we painted for the and, channel. Yeah, it was the first one. First one painted. So, that, so that whenever I get them, they do go to the top of my list. Mm. And so, uh, and so, I think it's fine. It's, you, you don't have to. I don't think anyone should feel bad for being disappointed, as long as say you don't moralize over it and you kind of get on your high horse and just be like, actually, I'm. Um, it's really gutting. And and yeah. if it does feel, I'm sorry, but it it will eventually feel like the. I think the. Uh, the game sort of runs out of steam a little bit. Mm. Um, some of the, I know pe I've not been in this community as long as other people. Um, and a lot of people are like, I really love the old miniatures and I really, really like them. I I'm sorry. I know this will annoy people. I don't, <laughs> I don't. Mm. I, uh, my least favorite thing about this game is the age of the miniatures. Uh, and, and I think a lot of them show their ages quite, mm. quite badly. So I think, yeah, so there, there's certainly some of the really old models that, that, yeah. that, that do. That, I mean, some of the old models are really nice, but some, some of them are, and, and that's the, and sometimes good, the best yeah. you can think the problem is though when, when the best thing you can say about it like okay so riders of rohan i i think they've held up pretty well mm -hmm. but when you're looking at a 20 year old sculpt it's like well i think that held up pretty well it's like great that is a baseline expectation yeah that is uh, true. you know they, they all sit perfectly upright in their saddles um and <laughs> they've all got one little tiny connection where their hoof touches the, the ground um and it's it's basically the same kind of pose over and over, yes. and over again they could um, be improved let's put it that way yes they they could they definitely they could definitely do better Absolutely, um, a, a, an army of modern warriors would just look would look superb. It would, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, there, there were a lot of people. A lot of people would jump in there and say, you know what, uh, riders of hunt—they're cheap. You can get them anywhere. That they, you know, if we got a new box, they'd be five, and they'd be thirty-five quid, maybe forty quid, because that's how much the new Age of Sigma stuff costs. I had a look at the. I don't know what they're called, even like the basically the equivalent of the Empire miniatures now, and they are really expensive. They look amazing, they but that's why I was tempted to look at them because they are amazing models comparatively so I, I, my, my view and I, I get that argument completely and this is a really this is a this is a, a view that comes from, from privilege and some people you know i i, I could maybe maybe i've got a bit more disposable income i don't know um yeah and and so three guitars hanging off the wall yeah, <laughs> so, yeah three old beat up guitars all of it <laughs> second hand but still i get the, no i get the point so my my view is i spend I, I love painting miniatures so that's my favorite part i love painting miniatures and the, the experience of painting a modern miniature is a lot more pleasurable than painting an old miniature so i personally would pay more for fewer modern mm. miniatures but mm. 
I completely respect that's a position of privilege and some people, um, and, and not even just privilege, some people are like, well, actually, no, I wouldn't. I would I would spend less on the older sculpts and I think that's perfectly respectable mm-hmm. and, I, and I, I appreciate that position. So I know you said you didn't want us to get into moralizing, but I I, I would like to moralize. Here we that. go. Come on. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I actually just think, that, to be honest, and look, I, I think I've heard whispers from people and I don't want to get into to sort of say that I know the truth behind the matter because I don't. I don't know at all. But from what I understand is there has been a bit of a cock up at Games Workshop HQ. And, you know, if you know better than me, drop the comment in. Um, but it's unlikely that anyone who actually does know better than me is, is likely to say that they do know better and will do it. But it's from what I gather, there was actually just a monumental cock up and it meant that SBG didn't land in the the rotors or something for like the schedule for the year so you know they might go right okay 40k 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 these 20 days of the month then 10 days of it are sigma and then there's two days that they will do you know one for mesbg and one for blood bowl and then the next month it's the same again but you know they might swap blood bowl for far cry and something else something else and you know but so from what i get that's what i heard and it's i heard it from people who know people so it, you know, it could, mm. and like, but it sounds like a monumental fuck up, and and I, I'd, I'd under, I'd imagine that the people who are in the Middle Earth team are not happy about it at all, um, because they're working hard, they, you know, they're recruiting sculptors and all this sort of stuff, and who wants to join the team? The toys they want to share. Yeah, exactly. Who wants to join the team as well? How it's, it doesn't look good if you're recruiting to for a sculptor for a, a Middle Earth range, which they have done this year. It doesn't look good if you're like, well, we, we've got, you know, we've got all these models in the backlog that we've sculpted, but we want you to do something that will be released in, you know, two years time or whatever, because mm. that's that's not a very desirable position to be in for most people, unless you're a super mega Lord of the Rings um, sculpting fan. So I just think that's one of the, the things that frustrates. And, and and I know, you know, people will say, oh, you know, these these new um, Army of the Dead stuff, they, they, you know, they're cool ideas. It's a great idea. It is a great idea if you're, you know, a person who don't doesn't like painting. There are plenty of miniature, uh, uh, you know, gamers out there who really, really hate building uh, uh, and painting models. But you know, nothing else except that and uh, a diorama, which is very expensive, but obviously designed for the hobbyist uh, rather than the gamers. I can see why people are. Uh, uh, God, it's really making me gassy. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> See why people are, are frustrated, and I know I'm, and because it's interesting, I would, I have bought that um, model. It's somewhere down there. I bought this get off the road thing, and I, and I do think it'll be really nice. I'm going to paint it up at some point, um, but I'm, a, I'm probably primarily, I paint to. Gaming is the way that in, the thing that encourages me to paint. I love painting, and I spend a lot of time doing it. But um, I, do, if I don't have a to- tournament deadline, I very rarely actually finish. Uh, an army so so i like to have those that kind of fresh stuff that they the kind of the whole gaming thing which helps you do the um the painting which helps me do the hobby which i really enjoy and um, so yeah it's 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 a bit of a frustrating year isn't it in in many ways because especially because the previous year it had such a build-up to the battle for osgiliath and and it felt like wow this is a real crescendo we've got a new new updated book we've got all this new plastic terrain coming we've got the new goth mob we've got new faramir the new uh other plastic rangers these guys um and all mm. that was so exciting and you think yeah build up build up we had bayorn and the uh, uh sorry the grim bayorn and the bayornings and we had the defense of the north elrond and, and, elrond and then the, 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 the court. exactly all this stuff building up and then a complete drop off the cliff and some you know, people would conspiracy theorists out there would say, "Well, Games Work have abandoned it because the Rings of Power didn't do very well, and they're all blah blah blah, and all this and and all of that stuff." And you think, "Well, it, it, it almost feels like the opposite to me." To be honest, I, I, that's the only thing is, I, I do feel like it, that's what keeps me going. Is I, I feel mm. like it's just a matter of time. Mm. I've, I've seen people like Tom in the comments were saying, "You know, just just basically to give us a few more made to orders until until the new stuff comes yeah, out." God, yeah, that's, that's, right. the point, that's the point. That's the clear plastics, isn't it? That is, I've yeah. seen a lot of people saying like it's just a signal. It's like. Uh, it look, mate, it, we, we've not yeah. forgotten you. It's coming, and <laughs> we're doing what we can. Yeah, yeah. I, I tell you what, it reminds me of um, there was an interesting duality from my. I'm just going to plug my last road trip, which which isn't even out yet. But um, so the, the last time I did my uh, a road trip, um, I had two interesting interactions, which frustrated me when it comes to thinking about how licensing mm-hmm. issues get in the way of, of people celebrating a creative endeavor. And they do a lot. I, I think that licensing laws and, and, and copyright laws are messed up to the mm-hmm. point that like it, it really kind of um, suppresses creativity. Uh, so I went to 
Sourel, I can't can pronounce it, Sourel Hole, the, the place that is credited very widely as being the birthplace of the Shire. It's it's like, it's it's a place from Tolkien's youth uh, and it is still a mill now. It was, a, it was a working mill when he was younger. It's now a little sort of reserve and it's got a little Tolkien museum um, and it's meant to be the place that where, where the, you know, from there, Tolkien's world kind of sprouted and and, and it's about 100 metres away from the place that's meant to be the old wood. Um, and there's this little cafe about a 20 metre walk from the, the, the front of the mill and it's called The Hungry Hob and it's 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 brand probably branded I, at first i thought it was called the hungry hobbit and then maybe some of the letters had fallen off but no it's all the all the menus everything is it's called the hungry hob and i spoke with the owners and they said yeah it was called the hungry hobbit but we were sued um by new line or whoever um and they said you can't be called you can't have the word hobbit mm. um so uh you know you're That's out interesting you out look and then um a few days later i was in oxford and i was at tolkien's grave yeah. Um, and I met a guy who said, oh, I knew him personally. Um, he, uh, yeah, yeah. He works at the university. Amazing. This guy. Did you um, interview him? So well, I didn't, I was, I was standing uh, by his, by the guy's grave. I thought, uh, I thought it was insensitive to be like, oh, Hey mate, let's have a, let's have a look. Do the YouTube channel, uh, I do regret it now. It's all, it's all for the content. But anyway, <laughs> it, so he, you know, he was, he was brilliant. He said that he met him at church, um, and they used to go to the pub together. Um, they both taught at Oxford at the same time. So, um, they, you know, you knew, you knew reasonably. So it's not, How old not, is this not, guy? A thousand years old. old. He was old. <laughs> he was old. Um, he said they, they you know, it, it, they, um, so, so they sort of knew each other back in the day. Uh, and I, one of the questions I was really interested to ask was, was at the, you know, towards the end of his life, what was it like talking to him about Lord of the Rings? Was he sick to death of it? Mm. What, was he sick of being swamped by people coming in and, and ask these questions? And he said, nothing and nothing delighted him more you know if he was oh, that's so pub, nice to hear isn't it isn't it lovely if yeah. he was you know friend of the pub or if he was um uh if it was one of his students or someone he was in written correspondence with you know we we know that you know there's a lot of published correspondence from tolkien mm. um and it's it's some it's a way of that his world building was done and he said that mm. he looked to be challenged on his world building people pointing out things that they thought was didn't quite add up or didn't make sense point you know talking to him about the language and you know through that challenge is is kind of how the world was built um and he delighted in it and he, and he reveled in it and and you know he'd hand out books and he'd hand out his letters and you know they went on to be worth tens of thousands of pounds this guy told me that he had a signed book from tolkien and he gave it to a girl he met on the train who he never saw again so oh, he's some regret and, and i just thought hey, look at the duality in in the space of 60 years odd between the man <clears> and his <throat> celebration and the sharing of it i mean it, 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 it kind of reminds me of another uh, anecdote i heard i can't where i heard this people will probably know more about this than me um where he visited his publishers for the first time um and he he kind of he said he said that it dawned on him it might be in the it might be in the epilogue to the silmarillion in a letter in the epilogue to the silmarillion where he says um i had no idea how big of an operation this was how how commercially intense of an operation publishing the lord of the rings was it was you know mm. it was really a real shock to him um because he was just in it for the love of the game yeah. and now we have a, an estate and a couple of film companies who are so precious about the the rights in the most pathetic little ways that it you know you can't have a cafe called the hungry hobbit opposite the, the place that that spawned all of this amazing law because mm. that would that will get you dragged into court uh and, and potentially have your it's business just, put down because while, while at university I, I i went to university down in winchester and they there was a pub called the the hobbit and it was just called The Hobbit. I don't really know what why it was called The Hobbit um, in Southampton. It, it, it may have had a connection at some point in Tolkien's life, but I don't think he was particularly connected to Southampton, so I can't remember the reason. But th there was a big, famous uh, legal battle uh, with um, the film company. I think it was the Soul's Iance company back at the time who owned the whole, whole thing. And um, people like Stephen Fry and so on who were, who were in the Hobbit films, because that was roughly when it was happening in sort of 2012, 2013 time, they all kind of came out in defense of this pub saying, you know, why, why would you pick on this, uh, this, this guy, uh, this pub? It doesn't make any sense. And I think, um, it's, it's, I think Syrian McKellen visited the pub in support of it and all this sort of stuff. And eventually the, 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 the big film company just kind of dropped its case and it, it was all like a big triumph for, uh, for the Hobbit pub. But um, it's interesting that, that, you know that this because I'd imagine what would have happened is the film company wrote a letter to the landlord or landlady of this pub and said you need to stop using the Hobbit and they were like 
screw you. I'm going to carry on using it. And then like maybe didn't, but this other, other pub you went to probably like, Oh God, no, don't want to get involved with that, which is probably the sensible move because a big legal battle could cost you, yeah. you know, bankrupt you, which is mad. But yeah. But yeah, I guess, so I guess the, the back to the, I can't remember what, what this, started this conversation. So I think it started, I think it started with, <laughs> with licensing issues at Games Workshop. Mm. I suppose my, my overarching point was, was it's once again, it's, it's these really petty squ squabbles over, what is essentially bureaucracy yeah. um, getting in a way, it, you know, the creatives at Games Workshop probably desperate, as we've been saying, to actually get models out and, and yeah. for the community to get their hands on them as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's that. So, yeah, it could be licensing issues. It really could be on dragon board. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it's fascinating. But I mean, in, in, in the long and short of it is last year was a slightly disappointing year for the hobby in a sense. But I mean, for people who don't know, um, that I, I have a sort of separate role in um, the, the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game because I'm uh, the marketing coordinator for the Great British Hobbit League. And this was the biggest year we've ever had in terms of events in our league, uh, which is now the biggest, which is, has pretty much always been the biggest in the world. I think it was 119 events that we ran uh, tournaments uh, over the course of the year and 1,000 and something players. I can't remember the exact total, but the, in, in some ways, it's is mad that the growth of the game is is complete has, has happened in such a way that it's exploded in popularity at a time when Games Workshop has done nothing with it at all. Isn't it interesting how how much as a proportion of Games Workshop sales of MESBG miniatures last year? How much I reckon a sizable amount is down to the GBHL. Like basically, <laughs> you're dry, you know, you're, you're marketing manager for the GBHL, but you're doing it for Games Workshop as well. Yeah, that's uh, the thing. Like, ultimately, we're we're promoting the league because we like the game and we want people who initially the reason for the league's sort of establishment was because the people who collected Lord of the Rings are so far and few between it's good to bring them together, which is a which is a noble cause. And that is still to a, to an extent the case. Um, obviously there are people like, all over YouTube and so on, and it's a much bigger community generally on the internet now. But still it's the, the fundamental reason is get people together in a room who like the same thing. And um, and yeah, you're right. What what we're essentially doing is going, hey look, you should you should buy these miniatures and yeah. you should yeah. buy these rules. And and actually it's sometimes not even that easy to do that. <laughs> like go, yeah, go on and buy these miniatures. Oh wait, the most popular uh, line infantry in the game, the Black Numenorians at the moment in the competitive scene anyway, you know, one of the best miniatures that you can get if you want to be a competitor not even for sale anymore. It's like it's like what the hell? <laughs> We're like advertising it and making it making this game, but Still, I, I I find that I find that a, a little bit. Uh, on, on the one hand, you could you could say yeah, it could be sort of the, the sad side of it is that we're promoting a game on behalf of a company that's that was a, it's very cynical. cynical. I don't I don't. Actually, the, that yeah. is the cynical side. But on the other side, it's people power, isn't it? You know, we're do we're you know yeah. people are still enjoying the game, and you know, Jay Clare yeah. and the various other rule, rules writers responsible for the rules over all the years have made a cracking game that a lot of people want to play. That I mean, that's that's the, that's the basis. Like mm. I've always, it's, it's interesting things. I, I was thinking about this earlier. <clears> um, I think I don't know whether it's a controversial controversial statement. My my main draw to MSPG is not Lord of the Rings. I love Lord of the Rings. Do I absolutely love it? But mm -hmm. um, I, I don't I don't think I want to play a Lord of the Rings game. Therefore, I'll play MSPG. Yeah, I play MSPG because it's the most fantastic war game going. And, I mean, uh, you, you, this, 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 I'll just sort of slightly interrupt in that because yeah, yeah. I, I, I like the. I don't really as much anymore because I've kind of gone, gone, gotten over it. But I like the Harry Potter world. For, for instance, I was obsessed with the books, read all them, loved it. it was growing up, I used to read them hundreds and hundreds of times. When there was a game uh, made uh, with the miniatures that looked like the ones in the film, was really excited. Called by Night Models. Night Minute Models. The, yeah, night, yeah the, the models were amazing. Bought them, painted Beautiful. them tried to play the game, absolute car crash, ended up selling the game uh, and selling the miniatures at, at a hefty profit, it must be said, uh, because I, I I assume I'm one of the few people who actually bought and painted them. But um, I, yeah, you're right. It's the game that holds you there because I love The Lord of the Rings too. I was uh, obsessed with it as a, a teenager and I'm still uh, a massive fan of Lord of the Rings world. But yeah, if, I, if it was a crap game, then no, none of us would be playing it. No. I mean, like, I mean, I, I love, I love Star Wars. I'm not playing the new Shatterpoint game because it looks nads. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's the thing. It's like you know, this year, even it, 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 we complain about the models and stuff because that's 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 that is a you know, it's a big sort of elephant in the room. Um, but my, you know, if, if I had to summarize my my hobby experience last year, it would still be you know, ten on ten kind of thing, like yeah. because of the GBHL, because of the events, because of scouring, and because uh, I. 
have basically lived to go to the tournaments. Like, that might sound really sad and depressing, but uh, uh, it's they've like the highlights of my year were repeatedly the tournaments. Absolutely love them. The community, incredible. Games have always been fun. I, you know, I don't mind spending a hundred hours painting up for, for for one of the event tournaments because I'm like, because it's it's special. It's still special, mm, and I, you know, I go to to tournaments for other games as well, and I enjoy them. They don't have the community like the, the like GBHL events do. I'm still amazed by that. Like, because every time I've heard, I, as much as I, I take it for granted because I've never, other than a brief period um, in my sort of teenage years when I was competing in the 40k school league, um, I've never been to any other tournaments uh, of any game system at all. So I've only ever known tournaments being the delight that they are and the community mm. of people who who go to the the Great British Public League events in particular, uh, well, uh, MSBG in particular. Um, are just nice. I just enjoy getting on with them. Uh, maybe it's, so, I don't know, maybe it's just a sort of unique combination of factors that people like the Lord of the Rings, they like painting, like all this sort of stuff. But generally, I've, I've yeah, I have a great time at them. So it's it's mad that the other tournament systems don't seem to have that. I'm, I, I'm have, still surprised. They have it. nice people in great tournaments. Like Legion, I have a lot of fun at Legion events and, yeah. and, and there are good people there. <clears throat> um, but uh, I think... MESBG has this unique, I genuinely mean unique, and I mean, well, from the systems I've played, I mean, someone might drop in the comments and say this game's got an, an amazing system like this as well, where people go to tournaments not just to win the tournaments and to be good at, at gaming, but genuinely to celebrate, like, the, the hobby in its entirety. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I was blown, the first MESBG tournament I went to was yours, was Imps, uh, and we did, yeah, we did, which is amazing. So thank you, but I, I owe you a lot. I owe you a lot. Um, well, I mean, you uh, know, you can make the check payable to Harry. Duff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still owe you for the hotel. Um, and, um, and you said, it was like, oh, it's painting competition time, painting competition time. And I expected, like with previous events I've been to for other systems, people to, to set out probably some, some nicely painted miniatures, some beautifully painted miniatures in a little area on the table. And two guys, I don't know who they are, walked in with a full scratch-built castle. Uh, and someone else had this... Um, I, think, I think that was Rob. Uh, Rob yeah. Oh, no, Richard. Was it Richard? No, Robert Burton. I want to, either Richard or Robert It does Burton. ring a bell. I, I, yeah. yeah. Uh, someone mm. else had a um, had a, the valley that... Um, I think they were playing Ugluk Scouts. Yeah. I'm and they right. had the valley in which Ugluk meets with... Um, uh, what's his face? Uh, and <clears throat> that's right and and they and, you know they have the first meeting between the orcs and the, and the urukai in this beautifully rendered um valley and there was about a dozen other of these display boards i was just i was like my this is how people are coming to like to show off their terrain mm -hmm. to a tournament it just wasn't something i was used to um and i don't think you you know i've never been to a star wars event where someone's been like oh i've got this uh you know this 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 uh, death star yeah yeah oh yeah exactly like you know <laughs> with, all the, with all the, the stormtroopers inside it or whatever yeah yeah i've got a hoth themed force and so here's my like downed 8080 that they're fighting over um nice. uh which is the kind of thing you know i've i've, I've always dreamt about doing a, a sort mm. of seven stone style fluffy tournament for legion um where you know it's like where the, where, where the, the the focus is on everything it's, it's you know you game in sure but we want themey lists and, and terrain and everyone I've spoken to about it said it won't work because it's just it's not in the community's not nature. It's not it's just it's not in the DNA of the community. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. Whereas it just totally is in the uh, the Lord of the Rings one. So yeah, you're right. And may, maybe we're uh, maybe it's just that people go to these events not like you say not just because they're gamers, but also because they're interested in in all the other aspects. And and the the community is now known for a bit of everything I, I do think actually over the last year or two it's gotten a little bit more competitive and maybe that's just the nature of it, having a really good rule set um having um a, a, a ballooning community you know as i said the, over well over a thousand people attended an event last year and um, that, that there's a little bit of a, a sort of subset of people who are very much competitive gamers and um, which can sort of it can crowd out the 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 themier people, the sort of the um oh, the, the themier people. Sort of... We end up on the bottom tables having a laugh. And... Yeah, yeah, that's, that is true, and and that's there's nothing wrong with that, is there? You know, but um, no. but uh, yeah, it, it it does. I think some people I've definitely heard people talk about. Oh, don't want to go to that event because that one's a GBH hundred or whatever. So therefore, I won't have a good time, which I think is just it's it's misguided. I think, but I can understand the the frustration of uh, uh, of going to an event and playing two or three people who are really there gaming it and they've not got a very themey list and they're all painted with contrast paints and that's it or whatever. Then I can understand maybe uh, maybe it might might frustrate me, but still, it's, not, it's still few and far between. But, yeah. It's it's few and far between, and it's also it's like well. You, you still have the breadth. I mean, I don't, I don't begrudge people their competitive events. No, you know, uh, 
some of them like the Nottingham GP, obviously, um, will put on the events like this. This is a competitive event. Yeah. Um, I still don't, I actually don't think, I don't think it shows through. I think you, I think you find a lot of other players just there for a bit of a laugh, but fine. You know, you've got the competitive events and you've got the fluffy events. I think that that system of having GBHR 100s, 90s, 80s, um, you know, and be like, actually in our league, in our competitive wargaming league, we're going to have a formal rules incorporated acknowledgement of the fact that some people just want to go to theme events and dick about. That's awesome. <laughs> and no, yeah. no one you get that. Uh, so you do you do get that bin plus like 40k. I know, sorry, praising 40k in a in a MESBG stream. I'm gonna get drummed out the magic. Well, no, circle, it's but, weird because I had a, um, you say you, you, I know you're already caveating your your compliments, but I I like I started playing it. I just don't like the system anymore, but I've I've never really played it in a I've never really met people who I think are horrible in 40k. Items. No, and, and so like if you go to the the London Grand Tournament where where like last year they set a record, they had a thousand a thousand 40k players, um, but they they have they've got their main competitive tournament and then they've got a narrative tournament and then they've got a little um, a, another one which is which is all about themey play and you don't really get points for winning the games, you get points for for doing the the, the themey stuff. Um, but it's it's a bit of an oddity. It's, it's, it's nice to see, but it's a bit of an oddity. Um, whereas obviously, like I said, I did Legion at, at the London Grand Tournament last year, and it was just a it was just a disaster. And and I I I didn't go to Imps 2022 yeah, because I, I went to the London that. Grand Tournament. Yeah, we we just bailed on day two. Didn't, so not, not it. <laughs> and did you did you lose all your games? Was is that right? I've never won a game of Legion at the tournament. I've been to like four tournaments. I remember never that. Won a game. Yeah. Uh, well, that's it's we've been, we've been best painted though. So. Oh well, you know, and and maybe that shows and, because and you're... This, okay. This actually this exemplifies what I mean. I'm sorry, I'm going to shut the hell up. No, no, you carry on talking. It's fine. It, at any MSPG tournament, best painted is is an award. At the end of the event, they they say this is the, this was the, everyone voted, um, and we you know this was the runner up, maybe or this is the person who won. Get a little round of applause and a picture taken. Um, one t in in an Elysian event, someone one of the TOs came up to me. Uh, tapped me on the shoulder while I was playing. I was like, just so you know, you've won best painted. And then fucked off. Was that <laughs> I was like, cool. <laughs> you know, did you get, you didn't get any prize? Not even like a certificate? I got, I got, I did get a little coin posted to me, but they didn't have it there at the event. Oh, right. Um, so they did, oh, well, that's, that's, that's a shame. Because yeah, because right, there wasn't hey, a vote. You just, they were just like, hey, mate. Yeah, we, we, oh, we yeah, got. yeah. Did, well, here's a coin in the post yeah. <laughs> somewhere. Uh, fascinating. Uh, anyway, uh, so, well, I, I know there's been a, a dozens and dozens of comments on a variety of different topics. So I'm going to uh, start reading through some of them. I'll be, I'll, I'll skip over ones that aren't 100% relevant or I, I'll briefly flash them on screen. Or where they don't agree with us, presumably. Yeah, uh, and, and that in particular. Uh, I'll start with this one. Um, I've got, I've got, not really relevant, but I'll, I'll, I'll entertain it. I've got to ask as a British man like myself, do you like tea? Alex, do you like tea? I don't drink tea. Really? No, I drink, I'm actually I drink... really shocked by that. I feel like you're a tea kind I drink, of guy. I drink a lot of coffee, but I don't drink yeah. any tea. Well, there you go. That's just another reason to not like <laughs> As if you needed another <laughs> reason. Uh, I like tea. I'm a big fan of tea. Uh, okay. Um, drum off uh, to baby. YouTube algorithm would love that. Yeah, it's totally true. Uh, as you know, we don't go for the low lowbrow gags talking about the rub my cock. Um, insert cricket noises in 2023. Mm. Oh, I see. Yeah. I, I was thinking originally six. Um, but not, <laughs> not quite that. That's uh, why you didn't get any money on the chase. Yeah. <laughs> True, but yeah, you're right. Not not great for 2023. Had fun at Ardacon, says Frederick. Also got COVID. Yeah, not a great combo. Um, uh, Ardacon was 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 ace again. It usually is. Um, but yeah, I think a few people got COVID actually after that. But 200 people in the room. What's going to happen? Um, evening all. Happy New Year. Uh, Michael's in. Uh, first time in two weeks without family and friends here. So we've watched the Christmas Doctor Who. Ooh. Oh. I, I did see the adverts. I keep hearing adverts. It sounds um, sounds good, but I, I haven't watched it in a long time. Don't forget the King of the Dead, lol. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, the reveal was killer for me. They showed the get off the road and said big news coming, but nothing. Yeah, I know that was that was they did hype it up a bit much, didn't they? Uh, the lack of releases must have to be related to issues surrounding the IP. I mean, to me, it makes the most sense. Plus, I heard a whisper that GW even has releases waiting to release. Yes, uh, I have. I have whispered that in the past that they definitely have things waiting. Um, I, 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 I think. Sweet. I think I heard that from either. I think one of the rules writers. I think I. Oh, I basically sort of got Jay to say something like jay claire the rules writer he, he said something along the lines because i was talking to him about um dan entwistle who um is was the new writer who was recruited and vaguely i think i think he said something like oh yeah and he hasn't even had really much of a chance to for any of his stuff to come out yet and i was like interesting because obviously dan's been working on stuff but now he's doing old world and some other things so he's obviously done something 
Old world, which hasn't necessarily, um, yeah, old world, which hasn't necessarily <laughs> today. I, 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 to be fair, I'm very tempted by the old world, but I just know I don't have time, or um, you know, I just don't have time. I, 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 maybe it's the inclination. Who drop, knows? drop the family. Yeah, yeah. get rid of that do, idea. Do the bare yeah. minimum at work. Yeah, go for your career. <laughs> I already do a bare minimum. I, I can promise. <laughs> you. There's definitely times when I, I use my the 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 studio at, at work to record and make podcast in links. Yeah, of right. course. Yeah, yeah. Only after I finish work, to be fair. Um, but uh, plastic Boromir kit, surely. Um, I, I think that is that a wish. I think that's a wish list thing. We will do wish mm. lists for 2024 later, but it's a good start. Um, the main thing this game needs is an entire line refresh. I mean, I don't disagree, but it's quite an ambitious thing to want. Um, we'll do wish list later. Um, currently making a battle chef for an upcoming club tournament called What About Second Breakfast? It's an uruk holding a platter and a cloche with an orc head on it. Meats back on the menu, boys. Wow. Oh, that's, Man, that's insanely that good. good. I've, I've heard about this What About Second Breakfast thing. Um, it sounds insanely exciting. I would highly... If I could go, I think it's on a weekend which I can't get to um, fairly fairly soon it might be really soon but it's in winchester or something as well so i'd love to go um but it's like a it sounds like a really theme and it's run by i think either by or in conjunction with john partridge who won the best um sporting Is this uh, sorry, best painting event. no that's not no that's something else sorry Sorry, yeah, no, best sport. Uh, he was the best painter in the league that last year, and I think he's either got some involvement in it or has helped, or is just in the area and is a big champion of it. Either way, um, that sounds awesome. Battle Chef, great. Uh, they should remove all fine cast models, fine. Um, I agree with Alex, the old miniatures are shit sometimes. <laughs> old orcs, elves, goblins. I mean, you're right. I mean, even the fine cast replacements of the stuff that was, was metal at one point are very frustrating. So, um, yeah. Uh, Tom Marshall, there are so many models in the range, both retired and current, to keep us going till the inevitable doom of mankind. We just need more MTOs to tide us over till license issues are dealt with. That's interesting. I mean, obviously, as as you said earlier, Alex, it, I, I, I'm the same. I've got I've got so much stuff that I could paint, but it's the it's the enthusiasm that is brought by people people going, oh, that's exciting. I'm going to bring that. And then you see it on the table at a tournament and you think, oh, people have got new things. It's it's exciting. It builds. And also it gives people the sense of uh, confidence that, yes, I can invest in this game, which and is a big all, deal. Which is a big is. deal if you want new players, especially. It's also, I mean, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? The question, questions of value. You know, mm. people saying, well, the game's going to get more expensive. It's like, well, what is, what is, what is value to you? Yeah. I mean, like I said, there are smaller companies, much, much smaller companies, like, you know, a dozen people operations producing vastly superior models. Mm. Um, well, there's, I, mean, there's, I mean, look at Medbury Miniatures who who make all the excellent um, uh, yeah, alternatives and Forge Master Miniatures, both of which are basically a guy with a computer and a 3D printer. Like, but even, and even they're, they're in smashing in that. Well, like, um, yeah, metals uh, for Medbury's as well. Yeah, like, well, I mean, and, 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 you know, I hate to... The, the Song of Ice and Fire Miniatures range. Like, Song, of Ice, uh, Song of Ice and Fire is a, is a smaller game than the... Yeah, yeah. Um, but their but their releases are they're keeping up a good schedule of releases with some really really decent miniatures. Mm. Um, that's that's I think what's possibly disappointing. I think I think the do we've we've I'm I'm not going to get back on that. Let's not let's uh, not repeat ourselves. No, good point, I'm going to let point. you carry on. Um, uh, I'm with Ali, uh, with you, Alex, painter and hobby enthusiast more than a gamer. Um, I think I think to be fair though, Alex, you are a bit of everything. I mean, and you're certainly getting better at the game. And you, you show, you show <laughs> the kind of very low. Well, <laughs> low, you, low but also, you you show the desire to be a be a gamer as well. You should, you know, you're. I, I think I, you're I, a bit I like me, game. but the you're game, like a couple game, of years behind it. On this spot. I, it's one. It's interesting. I, I I get this with PC games as well. Mm. There are some games I don't really I don't really care about being very good at. Mm. I just want to want to rock up and click until something dies or I die. Call there are other games where I'm like, actually, there's there's something to this that I really want to master. MSPG is a bit like that. I do actually want, as, as much as on my channel, I make it seem like I don't care, so I look cool. Uh, I, I do want to be good at it. Um, so, yeah. And, and it's also, it's, it's a way of celebrating your the miniatures you painted. I, yeah. I I love painting. Like I said, I don't like building, which is one thing I love about MSPG. You know, everything's just one one piece, clip them off the frame. Um, but there's nothing better than turning up a tournament, particularly one where the TOs put some effort into the terrain and getting your army out for the first time. And you've got mm. this, this painted army against another painted army on a on a nicely displayed board it's like that's just yeah totally agree totally agree you can be really proud of it uh tim has a camp says he's pr currently painting the old lsr mounted model and that's on one of the better older models it's just harder to make it look pretty yeah and then that's true i mean you have to be an insanely good painter to make some of those old models look good and some of the new ones are just kind of they have the detail built in and they're brilliant but yeah the, the thing that pisses me off most 
and I know we've sort of talked about it a bit, but it's just if it, stuff isn't in stock, it's just never there. And that, that's pissed mm. me off at the moment because I, I, I was really excited about starting a, a fiefdoms army. And, I, I, you know, I've, I've got some stuff uh, already in the backlog for it. But I knew I, I've, I've always thought I'll, I'll fill in the gaps of the stuff when I get to building the army. And I come to it, start getting all the, the blisters that I have out. So I have some of the heroes, I have some of the um, clansmen, I have some of the axemen. Um, and then I was just like, oh, what, what could I do with? Oh, I need the men at arms of Dol Amroth. And I went on the website to buy the men at arms of Dol Amroth. Not, they don't even exist anymore. It's like, what is going on? Like, these are right there in the book. And they're not only right there in the book, they're like the best profile in the army, uh, which is seems stupid for them to be there. Maybe it's because they've got bendy fine cast um, pikes or something, and they're trying to do something with that. Oh, but still, just still. Just fine cast pikes. That's... <laughs> oh, fine cast pikes. Yeah, those um, Galadrian, old Galadrian ones were awful. But um, still, it's just... Uh, it's just frustrating because then, and what I did, I, I asked for um, for my secret Santa. I asked for fiefdoms models, and and somebody's got me some really nice. I, I think they're Medri three uh, D prints, and they look amazing. And I was like, yeah, paint them. I've done them, and I've also painted up some Perry miniatures um, mercenary pikemen from the fifteen hundreds or something, which also look really nice models. And it's the first mm -hmm. time I've ever bought a, a box of toy soldiers from another system with the intention of using it in SBG. And all I'm thinking is, if Games Workshop had those models on their, their website, I'd have bought them. That's, and mm. you know, they're missing out. But anyway, interesting. Um, Last Alliance supplement would be Ace, that, and Angmar, a real one. We're doing a lot of wish listing. that's good. But um, yeah. <laughs> they're not, they're not heeding your car. They're not, they're not <laughs> If they don't stop, you'll turn this stream around. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. No, no, I, I, it's, I, I think the problem is uh, reviewing 2023 is is just basically a moan fest, isn't it? That's the problem. Um, there's not like a lot. I, I, yeah. I mean, in terms of releases, yeah. Uh, but yeah. I, I, I think maybe we need to focus more heavily on on the, the really cool comments you've made. You know, talks about how much the league has grown and yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah, and just how what are your what your best events of the year, and what was what was your highlight of the year, and you know, did you have a good moment, or you know, did you go to a good event, or or that sort of stuff? But um, yeah, mm. big moan fest anyway. Uh, Warriors of the Dead, at least they're being transparent. Oh, hey, that's good. I mean, what more do you expect from Adam of three that years? Is, that yeah. is quality. That is quality comment. Put, comment of the comment of the moment. Tagline. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Rob Mycock says the lack of releases last year made it far easier to look outside the GW range mm. and start breaking away with the Peter version. It's funny that literally just said exactly the same thing, which is interesting because I grew up on the Peter Jackson aesthetic, and Lord of the Rings is those films to me. And the books were always an after after uh, afterthought because when I'd I'd read the book, I'd read it with the idea of the uh, Peter Jackson universe in my head. And um, now I'm starting to think, hmm, maybe not. And also the Games Workshop aesthetic, to be fair, things like the fiefdoms of Dol Amroth, there were no film versions of it. So mm. my my stuff came from the books from, from Games Workshop, which is interesting. But now I'm starting to think, well, a pike from the fiefdoms, what could they be like? Maybe they are a mercenary from the 1500s. And it kind of works. So. Um, Natalie's in uh, says ah, it's been disappointing right. to seeing how little attention the game has had from GW, but I've enjoyed my first year playing. Yeah, and Natalie's um, I've I've played Natalie I think twice, maybe three. I can't times. believe it's her first year. I know she's such a good player as well. And an amazing painter, Natalie. I don't yeah, know, oh yeah, hang on. Yeah, is, is um sorry, is it is this your first year hobbying in total, or is this is this just 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 MSBG because? I was looking at your conversion. I would be very card, surprised if, it, if it's hobbying in general. Because well, me too. But I just 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 wondered because I mean that was that was a superb superb paint job. Mm. I would be very very surprised if it's uh, if it's Natalie's first time painting a miniature. Um, but either way, uh, yeah, they're incredible. Those uh, Angmar and and as you as we said, incredible player as well. Uh, very very good. Rob uh, says instead of started looking at historical models and more book lore folks. Rob, it's like you're we're on the same way. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I'm like literally exactly the same. I realize you said that at 8 38, we're now 20 minutes after that, but still, uh, it's I, I'm fascinated because I think beta, I, I don't know whether Rob, you're going to be at Bangor in the week, uh, this weekend, but I'd be intrigued, intrigued to see what you what you're using. Um, Mark Hansen, I don't think you've commented yet, but welcome, Mark. Production of everything, not Leviathan, has been dreadful this past year. I couldn't get any of the latest kill team boxes for love nor money. Uh, Epic was delayed a crazy long time and MESBG got shafted. Yeah. I, I even if you do manage to order something from Games Workshop, just so they've got in stock, the amount of time it's taking them to get things to people. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, for my, my Santa Gast, I ordered Radagast first from Games Workshop. 
uh, waited a week and a half, emailed them. They're like, we, don't, we basically don't know when it's going to be with you. It's yeah. at some point soon. <clears throat> Cancelled it, ordered it from Element, and it received, I, I ordered it at four o'clock from Element Games and got it the next day. So yeah. what, why do you exist? Why are you like, why, how, how is it that poor? Like, the, the, I, yeah, I, I was the same. Like the, the, and um, my, I know my local gaming store was, was putting lots of stuff in the, the gaming store just discord saying stuff like, you know, people that they'd ordered a hundred Leviathans and they got 30 or something like that. And, mm. and obviously I don't really care about um, Leviathan, but I do think, oh, I feel bad for that. My, my local gaming store who, you know, 70 model, uh, 70 boxes of 120 quid or whatever it is stuff have, have not arrived. And they're like, and, and, the, and people so are paying so I, for these. I yeah. pre-ordered mine from, I, I went on a register of interest for Leviathan. Mm. Um, they they said, yes, you'll get a copy and then had to rescind that. Yeah. Because man, um, because they got a, a small allocation. Uh, like least... The logistics of Games Workshop just seemed like an absolute shambles. Yeah, I know. It, and yeah, you just wonder what's going on. But I, God, to be a fly on the wall inside Games Workshop and um, yeah, I, I, the amount of times I've asked them for interviews about anything and I've been given a flat no uh, is is ridiculous. Not just for um, for the, the the hobby channel, but also for my my job as a journalist. Mm -hmm. You know, working in Nottingham for a long time as well. You know there's been so many stories that are generally quite positive about um uh the games workshop which i would love to have asked some questions of uh, of people about all of this stuff because it would be really interesting to know what the answers are but i don't think that'll ever happen but anyway mark uh, good point uh yes adam give me plastic give and ellendale set mm. foot and mounted <laughs> oh man i would go for that i would definitely go for that um jesus uh, said hamish they were all a year ago so we've gotten to the bit where i was showing off the goth mog and the um rangers uh, Tim has a camp that would be amazing. Uh, yeah, I agree. Mark, how is it not a modern plastic Frodo and Sam? Yeah, I thought that. I think that the the. There are, I mean, we'll get onto our wish list in a bit, but it why why there aren't a modern um, versions of the the Fellowship in full? You don't have. We do not have a Fellowship of the Ring in new style plastic models. So surely, Gandalf the Grey, Frodo, Sam, and Boromir are going to be on that list. But yeah, we'll. Uh, there is a new plastic Frodo and Sam. They're sitting with Merry and Pippin under a tree root, hiding from a ring wraith. Very good, team at Tiberius. All oh, battles, rooms in Middle Earth. I think this will be Damien. And it, yes, it is. Uh, I've said this before, but I think the Fancy New Army of the Dead would have been great in literally any other year alongside a normal release schedule. Great if you like it, irrelevant if you don't. It's only been so badly received given the lack of other releases, not because of any objective qualities of the product itself. Uh, yeah, and I think yeah, I, I think Damien said in um, in the B Time stream. Um, Something along the lines of if they just released those measuring sticks. Can you remember the measuring sticks that were like the the Gandalf? Yeah. yeah. And if you if if that had been the only release of this year, you would be like, what in God's good earth were they thinking? <laughs> but alongside a box set where you get a lot of cool stuff, makes sense. It's a nice thing to have. But it's, it's you know, thing, I think it's, it's like similar. If they put Middle Earth on the um uh it's almost like it's almost like you know now we're being put that we're being punished they're like uh <laughs> the they put middle earth yeah. on the on the uh the big teaser weekend they gave us a little morsel because they're like we can't give anything more yet but go on have this 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 is you know this will keep you going everyone's like oh fuck you now they're like fine no, no middle earth for every, yeah. anyone until you finish your diorama they're now tinfoil hat time um oh no we're all waiting. of it now, yeah, all of this has happened since um, since a, a YouTuber last year reviewed the Osgiliath box set and said Naughty Games Workshop in it. And look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna point any fingers it's to said YouTuber, but the releases have dried up since then. Um, I mean, I think I think it's I think it's more straightforward than that. It's it's yeah. ever since you included your face in a thumbnail. I mean, it's been, it's been a, <laughs> the whole world has been in crisis ever since. The Matrix has been set off <laughs> in equilibrium by me, me me putting my face in a thumbnail. Madness. Uh, there you go. Team at Tiberius says that's not plastic. Um, that is it's it's a kind of plastic, a resin plastic. Um, is it not? Then never mind. Um, there's a motel in uh, Oha. Ohakuni, a small tourist town in New Zealand, and it's called The Hobbit. It's pretty old, though. I went there as a kid, full of Lord of the Rings themed fancy art. I think if you don't, it's one of those things you could probably call anything anything as long as nobody knows about it. And now it's been on the internet, they're going to get sued. So, well, <laughs> you've just, just destroyed <laughs> The Hobbit Hotel. <laughs> Mark Hansen says, Yes, The Hobbit tried to drink the fellowship a couple of times, each member of its own cocktail, never ended well. Yes, the thing about the, uh, the Hobbit pub in Southampton, this is referring to, is that they had a whole range, I think 
originally they had nine different cocktails and then they expanded it to 12 because it was too popular and they kind of lost the whole point of there being nine. But anyway, and um, they had, you had to do, in order to get a t-shirt, just one t-shirt, you had to drink all of these nine pint cocktails in one night and, uh, or one day, one, one evening. And you had a card and you would tick it off. And uh, if you did that, you would be given a sort of t-shirt worth somewhere in the region of, you know, a tenner and, uh, you would also be just stinking drunk. And some of them are absolutely awful. Um, but I am proud to say, I don't know whether I... Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did it two years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? The problem is, uh, back in my university days, I was uh, uh, skinnier than I am now. And they were small size T-shirts and they have been washed and washed and they shrunk even more. So I don't think I actually own them anymore, but I, I probably should have kept one. Then, as, as memory. how many times did you do this? I did it twice. I did it twice. The first year, um, you had to do it in the thing. But then there was a whole c controversy around encouraging uh, binge drinking. So they said you could you could do it over a period of time, which which we did the second time we did it a period of time. I think in two or three days, but um, still. Impressive. I'm proud of the face, I guess. The the ring wraith cocktail was was quite nice. It was like Coke and Jack Daniels and rum and some black shot of some sort, like a liqueur. It, they're all horrendous and they're all a pint. And but most of them had like at least half orange juice. So you just felt awful by the end of the night, because not just from the alcohol consumption, but just the acidity, the the sugar, and yeah, or yeah, and all that sugar. So, but yeah, um, glad to see Mark has tried to drink the fellowship a couple of times. It did, uh, yeah, it never ended well for me. We used to go to a place called Jester's afterwards, famous for not having um, any kind of flooring other than just concrete, which they just hosed down at the end of the night with sick and all that sort of stuff off it, and it was so sticky. Oh, they hosed it. I think you said they hosed it down uh, with sick. <laughs> oh no, yeah, yeah. Well, we might as well have done the amount of uh, amount of sick that was there. Anyway, marketing coordinator who failed to mention MESBG on the chase. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I, I have got some. I've gathered some memes uh, that people mentioned about the chase uh, and SBG earlier, but we've got, been signed. Far, rather distracted by actual Lord of the Rings content in the last oh, hour, so we can only apologise for that. Uh, catching up, oh, Michael saying catching up with Harry the Chase Facebook memes. Harry, maybe you should hold a judging contest. D D Michael, you're you're reading my mind. You're spoiling it. That's exactly what I was going to do. I've got the the pictures ready and ready to go. In fact, maybe we should have a pause from the comments uh, and do that Let's now because we've got we've got them. So um, where is the first one? So <clears throat> this is meme number one. Uh, I'm going to just put this on the screen while it loads. So here we go. This is meme number one. Oh, hold on. Let's get rid of, get rid of Michael. Uh, where is Michael? Where is he? Hide comment, comment, comment. There we go. I think I'll start. Here. <laughs> so there we go. This is, uh, I, I don't know if you can, yeah, there you go. <laughs> that is good. That is really good quality that's memeing. Not, that, that so um, in terms of, you know, out of 10, what are we thinking? What are we thinking? Is this a 10 out of 10 uh, being the best quality meme? Is it is it half quality at five or is it a one? What do you think, Alex? I don't think we can. I don't think I can give it a ten, only because it's the first one. We've got we we can't set an impossibly high bar. Yeah, that is um, true. You know, we've got to have somewhere to go. But I'm gonna, it's an eight. It, I mean, it's, it's it's a laugh out loud meme, and that those are those are they are rare. They are rare. rare. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's right. Let's go to meme number two. It's this one. <laughs> That's good. That is good, actually. So uh, this is this is me when I was uh, very excited by the other contestant on the the chase. Uh, bringing back ninety four thousand pounds to the uh, to the the pot, so that's that is good. Obviously, you'd have had to watch watch the program to get the the reference there. Yeah, so I, it's uh, Alex, great. Which is, which also, in that you look you look a little bit like Bran from from Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. I don't know whether that's a compliment, you know. So I'm, well, I'm not. I didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would give that a solid seven. Um, it's the the use of this face, which um, is is a very old image of my face, is is disturbing me somewhat. So um, that 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 is why it's been relegated it's slightly. Down a bit. But yeah, other than that, it's a top quality meme. Here we go, number three. Uh, so this is, says, "What Christian festival is the subject of Tis the podcast?" And I say Lent, Christmas, and then it's got an image of me, and then it says on last week's Tis the podcast, and there's a very cleverly photoshopped uh, me dressed as Santa. Uh, on the uh, on the thing there, which it is very, which it's it's, it's good work because that was me at the GBHL finale. So it's good work. It's good work. Uh, I like that. There's a lot of effort and thought gone into that one. 
Uh, okay, so I'm going to give it a five. It's too, You're going to give it a five. Ooh, yeah, it's too clever. Yeah, yeah. Harsh, you didn't harsh. raise anything. I mean, yeah, I, well, oh, I, I like that. You I don't like don't that. bring your memes here if you can't take <laughs> if you can't if you can't take the flag. I think I think I that's I don't hold back. I think that's a solid solid seven. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it loses the points because because you need to have known that it's me dressed as Santa, which is not immediately obvious, but it's still no. quality memeing. It's quality memeing. Here we go. Uh, oh, here how we did go, the chase yeah. go, Harry? I didn't mention the GBHL. Forgive me, I did not see I failed you all. Yep. Very good. I like that. That's very clever. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. And that's, um, I think, it's it's subversion. It's subversion of the format, right? Yeah. yeah because he, he doesn't, you don't, you don't get redemption and forgiveness. No, I don't. Well, I'm not allowed that, which is actually no. quite, it's quite quite mean. Uh, and the last meme is here we go, Bradley. And what do you do to relax when you're not journalising? And in uh, it's quite blurry. It says, "Well, I play brackets star realizes he isn't protected by the medium of radio and instantly scrambles to make himself more relatable." The drums. So I have a drum kit set up in my garage, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which. Is quite good. I must say that it's very good. good. Plus, I don't believe for a second the bullshit sanitized version of events that you gave at the beginning <laughs> of the podcast. So I think it's based in fact as well. That's the problem. No, well, you see, the sanitized version of events is what got me on the program. So it I... was a sanitized version of events. Uh, the alleged. Oh, and now the, the truth is out. <laughs> The sanitized version of events is what got me on the television. I think Should you it, need yeah. to have a succinct, succinct, funny moment and a reason to spend the money. What you're going to spend the money on, and it made sense. That I'd spend it on the tampering thing. Anyway, so uh, best meme. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and say it's this one because it's Agreed. just yeah. What, without, it's just without it's it's the great. It's got the format. It fits the format really nicely. It's it's very good. Although this, uh, I'd say, is a close second. Also, it's top quality um, Photoshop, which does help. Although these are quite good. I do like this one. Uh, the, these ones with the, the, the. I think there's another one that I'm missing. But anyway, uh, there you go. Thank you very much for uh, all the people who memed me earlier which was good fun. Now, back to the comments. Uh, so we've got, uh, here we go, Battle Camper, just show some pictures up on Thrifty Middle. Oh, okay, there you go. So the, oh, this uh, must be uh, Tom Marshall's Hornby uh, set, I think. Uh, Natalie Pearson, you've had a hell of a first year. Congratulations on your recent win. Yeah, I think Natalie's gotten somewhere in, I don't want to say the top 10, but it's certainly this top 20 of the whole league or something like that. Very high up. Is it 20? Anyway, well done to Natalie. Anyway. Because of the Hobbit mentality, that's why the community is so good. People who love peace, gardens, food, pipe weed, and ale, indeed. Uh, Evening all says Min Quisitor. Oh, that, that, there you go. He's in. He's in. He's in. He's in. We were, we were it's complimenting. Too late to hear the nice things we said about him. Yeah, I was going to say we were saying uh, lots of nice things about uh, Chris's conversion work in uh, at the very start of the podcast. Um, uh, do do rewind uh, later on. I, I, um, I, go on. I just respect the profile picture as well. If you can. Oh yeah, that is a dog obscuring face i like it which is all i want really that's all anyone needs sean clark says i don't even really know the rules properly but i go to events celebrate the hobby and engage with the best community in wargaming which people didn't take this for granted as much as they do yeah that's fair mm -hmm. uh, michael says i did the tournament board for the first time in 2023 that's something to celebrate definitely might not have have done had might not have done had some new shiny um, uh, uh, middle earth baubles turned up there can be silver linings but except the black numenorians point harry made yeah that's true that, that's interesting i mean I, I also did my first um first board in i, yeah, I did three you, you, i never, never in my life and i did three boards this year yeah didn't you didn't you throw away your first one as well you've been yeah it's trash yeah that's, that's a trash piece of crap and i thought it was quite one, good no it wasn't no <laughs> it was quite it was definitely quite entertaining watching uh watching you build it because there was that <laughs> moment so that's when the second board that one i've kept that oh one. okay because there so was that one that you live like. streamed, wasn't it? And and there was a chaotic moment with a resin pour, yeah, and yeah. also you were like coughing because you had a real bad cough. I had and a then really bad then cold, yeah. Kiwi, you started coughing. The resin was going everywhere, and then Kiwi started barking or like jumping. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was genuinely one of the best 30, 40 seconds I've ever watched on a live stream because it was just <laughs> absolute nonsense, uh, the pain uh, and chaos. suffering. Yeah, yeah, all that sort of stuff. Not it's like the same with your videos. You know, all you can you can put all your effort into making a fantastic YouTube video. But all you need to do is capture you falling over on a mountain. I, I swear to God, <laughs> it, you, when it gives you that little replayed spike on on YouTube, out of statistics, anyone doesn't have a channel, it, it tells you what people, which bits people are skipping to and which bits people are replaying. Yeah, and, and I fall over at one bit in like a fifty minute video where I did this epic <laughs> trip across the Hebrides. Uh, and uh, it's like people tuning out, people tuning out, people tuning out, the fall, and then people tuning out, <laughs> tuning out, tuning out. It's great. The the funny thing about that is, in particular. Um, I, every time I mention Alex to to Louise, so I say I say, oh, I'm going to the tournament. Uh, Alex is 
uh, Alex going to be there or like, oh, well, I was just chatting to Alex on the thing about the, the Christmas thing or he's built a board or whatever, you know, um, uh, she, she go, oh, Alex, is that that's the, the guy who fell over it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because because I, I showed her it because I was in absolute stitches watching it. And I watched it a couple of times, not just in the advert, because uh, you had like a, I think you play, you put like a, a, a a trailer of, of that for that one yeah, on your sort of tease. it was put for one of my streams I put a lot yeah of yeah you had to do a tease and um and I, I i got in stitches of that and then for the actual video i was just in pissing myself again and I sh she was just wondering what i'm laughing at because usually uh hobby content isn't isn't the sort of stuff she's she's bothered by she, but she was intrigued by my hysterics so uh, she's <laughs> she she now knows uh, uh alex as Great. being the guy who fell over on the mountain it was just something about the way your leg twisted <laughs> it was just so you know, you know what the, the interesting thing is <laughs> probably quite painful that was so that place it's steeper than it looks in the video it's also extremely slippery yeah uh, and i was thinking like i was like um because obviously i had to go down the hill to put the camera down yeah uh, and then go back up the hill again so that was the third time i'd done it and i was just thinking like I'd, it'd take me like 10 minutes to get down and like 10 minutes to get back up i was like i've got the hang of this now uh i know where i know where to put my feet you know there's little sort of rocks jutting out kind of thing uh, and I sort of walked down it so that I could place my feet and know where I'm going to stand so that then I could go back up. So I did a trial walk <laughs> because I knew that I'd then be talking and having to like, like multitask. Talking I love that you had to practice walking. Straight over, straight over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Top work. Anyway, uh, if you haven't watched that one, which one that would be the Scottish, one of the Scottish videos, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, Painting Elves in the Hebrides. Video yeah. One. It was very, very entertaining. Uh, and fast forward to that bit just to increase the level. Yeah. And then just, and then just close it. <laughs> uh excellent uh there we go who's next um is it because you're the only one who painted your army uh i don't know what uh, this this is a the, the, this is a thing that's referring to something um, he's referring to the fact that is is this not the him referring to the fact that he he very heavily assisted with maybe my, maybe uh, no because i don't know whether that'd be referenced that yet we haven't got quite there because this was still 20 minutes we're 25 minutes behind on comments so we really need to catch up right, gotcha. anyway uh don't matter uh james Harper's funny this this chat is going on while harry's getting roasted on facebook for his appearance on the chase i i, I really I, I must admit i've seen i've seen quite a few comment uh notifications flash up on my phone but uh i i enjoy the i enjoy the roasting it's fine and um, people are allowed to do it live in the chat as well so feel free uh hey guys love the content says aaron that's nice thank you um Old world, it's not. E it's not even. I'm <laughs> oh, oh, so sorry. There, there are new memes. There are new memes. Are there? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See this one. Michael Bradford is just, is just. He's really turned he's, up. He's today. in charge. Can you, can you send me any memes on I will, um, I'll Facebook send this Messenger, and I will, I will yeah. immediately download them and put them on. The yeah, I mean, this, this one might, might even edge out the previous top spot. Oh, so. great. Okay. Well, I'll keep doing that while you download stuff. Uh, here we go. It's not even a rumor. Adam Troke told us at the Q and A at Fest that things are coming out and that they're cool. Oh, did. It? That's, there was a Q&A. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting that Q&As have started again because the last few events I've been to, they haven't, they haven't um, done much. So that's interesting. Not really into any Warhammer stuff, but I prefer the old world of set together AOS, but I don't like square bases. Yeah. I like I like, I like, like the world. The models are cool. It's cool, which is why I play neither. Will someone, UK, drag me to a tournament this year? Aaron, just go. Pick one and go. Honestly, there are so many good choices. Um, it depends where you're based. Obviously, it's easier to go somewhere that's really close, but... My God! Not your GP if there's still tickets. I don't think there are. GP, uh, well, I don't think it's sold out. I don't think it's sold out. Um, and that would be a good. If that not, would, then not GP's next. It time. would certainly be a good one to start because it's big um, and it's sort of seeded so that if you're a new player, you'll end up yep. uh, playing yeah, people yeah. who are yeah, uh, like also, you know, and, and then you uh, might still win something. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah, there's there's all the themey ones like um, Rings of Men is one that I went, went to recent. Uh, it's sort of every that's an annual sort of fluffy one. Seven Stones is fluffy, um, but that's for doubles. So if you don't have anyone. Uh, that you know immediately that might be a tougher I, I, I love the number tears i thought that was an absolutely fantastic event oh number tears is brilliant and um, that's later in the year as well um yeah. gosh, there's, I, there's so I, many I, there's so many have a look on the if you just search the gbhl in google and go on the events and there's links to loads and loads of pages and just just choose one that's close to you and it'll be well worth the effort and yeah, um, you can even look on the attendee list and see if someone who you're interested in meeting like alex is on there or something like that so you know, Christ, might be worth I'll, it. I'll warn against that though yeah <laughs> and michael says when my sons were young we measured value not by the cost of a toy but how much they played with it i think there's something in that but do accept high prices can be an impediment for some yeah that's a fair point i, I think that was in reference to the old world stuff yeah so yeah, I think when, when I was saying you know value is is value the number of models you get for the price you pay or is it is it about the, the quality of those models? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. 
it's a good, it's a good point. Uh, Lemmy Mini, Mini Lord of the Rings. I, I, I don't know the name, but thank you. Welcome, welcome along. Still waiting for an order I placed three weeks ago. The only updates I get is this part is no longer available. So I'm convinced they're waiting until there is nothing left in my order. See, so that's a very interesting. So talking about Games Workshop wow. delivery times. I assume so. Yeah. And I, I had, I can't, I can't what I ordered now. But I've, I've shared that. I think I've shared it on my, on my group. The, um, the, the picture because I ordered one item, one item from mm -hmm. Games Workshop from the official store. And yep. then a few days later, I got, oh, it might mean a week later, I got an email and it said, this item is no longer available in your order right. so that we don't delay the rest of your, your the rest of your order. Um, we have, we've canceled that item and you'll get the rest of it. It's like, mate, that, that was it. That, that was the item. So you've just, you'd be like, nah, nah, we, you're not, you're not getting that. That's just, ah. That's so annoying, though. I, it's, it, there's nothing worse than ordering something. Like, well, we, you know, we had a contract for performance, and you've you've now breached that contract. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, I'd, I'd find that frustrating. I mean, I ordered some stuff on Christmas Day from Warlord Games, and it arrived within four days. And I was like, that is insanely good. I think Christmas Day, I ordered it Christmas Day, sort of lunchtime or afternoon, something like that. Boxing Day follows it. Two days they had. Unless, unless they have people working on Christmas Day, like that's mad. I thought that was impressive. Um, that great, anyway, uh, we've got some more memes. Uh, I haven't actually looked at these yet, so um, let me all, just. They're all safe for work. You're fine. Uh, let me. Ju I, 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 I hope so. I've just let me just hide that comment. So more memes. Uh, here we go. What's this one? The grant. Oh, I can't see it. I can't see it. How do we see see the bottom? So, so that, that's that's the whole meme. You've, you've got the whole meme there. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even it's, see it's it. It's always great when you when you when you John's, don't realize that's the punchline. It sounds like a good meme. <laughs> no, I didn't even look. I was looking for a bit of text at the bottom because it's got like a uh, white right, line on no, it. But, oh no, that is that is good. It must be said. That is, I quite enjoy that. And also, it's a good photo of me. I'll take that. It's good. <laughs> Looks like I'm no, enjoying that's, myself. That's Ian McKellen at the top. <laughs> Very good. Enjoyed that. <laughs> top banter. Top banter. Uh, here we go. I love <laughs> Lent yeah. movies. The little drummer boy. <laughs> <laughs> that is good i love it. it's the great thing about that is it's it's, it's got so many in one you it's know. so many levels it's very yeah, it, it is it's a layered meme <laughs> oh uh, man uh, i think they're both michael bradford's handiwork excellent that's that's excellent. that that one certainly is yeah yeah i think they both were um uh, that is brilliant um in fact yes michael has also sent me those uh on um messenger as well so thank you so much uh there is uh there is one more i believe hold on let me just get it uh, where is it gone? And sorry, talk amongst yourselves. Talk also, amongst I hate, hate to interrupt. If, if we are going to wish, you know, it's half past. I don't know. I, you, I think you've got a strict 10 p.m. curfew, haven't you? Uh, yeah, just yes, you're completely right. But let's just do this one quick. I've never met Harry Park and I've never watched The Chase, but I'm sorry, I can't go on. That's okay. Your memes say more than real evidence ever could. I'm it's, sorry. Have you, have you, do you, do you know the meme format? Because this is this is a classic. It's, it's an format. old Simpsons reference, isn't it? When Homer is yeah. accused of uh, uh, groping someone or something, is that right? Yeah. Or... So in a way, it's quite a problematic meme. I think it's yeah. <laughs> it's original format, but it is good. It's a good. Yeah. It's good, it's, it's good quality. Good stuff. Good stuff. Excellent. Thank you for all the memes again. Uh, right. Let's carry on. Uh, I'm afraid gotta go, but we'll be here next. SR. Thank you. Nice, nice to see you, old gaffer. I've got to go next stream whenever that be. Thank you. Join our stream on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. There's an old world stream on the Battle Camper channel on Sunday. Yes. Looking new, forward to New Year, old world. Looking for Alex joins and he says, Hey, it's that guy after the uh, the chase. I uh, just joined. Glad to be listening along. Thanks, uh, Cameron uh, from uh, Paints on the Forum. Have my second tourney coming in a few weeks. Pretty big one in Canberra. Good luck for that. Ads. Um, I, it's great. I, I, I love that um, there's, there's a big community all over the world as well. And it seems to be the same sort of vibe everywhere people the tournaments seem to all have the same kind of creativity but australia it must be said some of the rules packs are absolutely fantastic there's got that it's just full of creativity i love it every time i see a rules pack over there i think i want to do that um so it's great mate of mine had 4k worth of stock waiting for four weeks at his shop last year my god Bloody that's hell. mad isn't it you think how can you run a business on that if you're waiting for stuff to arrive Aaron says, feel an IP issue will be resolved with GW slowly open their marketing grip to other brand deals. Well, I don't know. The only thing, way they're opening their marketing grip to is by is by selling their own IP to other things rather than the other way around. They're not like suddenly buying Lord, um, Star Wars IP. Um, so, just, I, I think um, I might I have missed the point. Go on. No, I, I think I mentioned this on, on, on a stream before um, that. In an earlier job, when I was, I was my, my first job, I was an admin assistant at a, a law firm that dealt with like investments. Mm -hmm. um, and so we used to get investment advice weekly. 
And I remember this was this was like 2012, I think, when Tesco's and all the supermarkets were in huge amount of trouble. There was even a talk about Tesco's going under. And so this advice was specifically about where to put your shares if you're a rich person um, who is concerned about Tesco's losing all its value mm -hmm. uh, and losing the value. And it said, you know, look at look to Games Workshop. And it, you know, it's funny because I had to advise, the, you know, ignorant investors investors as to what it was. It's like wait, they make little toy soldiers kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But it said the reason that they're such a good investment is because um, everything, everything is controlled by one company, which is so, so rare these days. Yeah, yeah. So from um, uh, design, conception, IP, production, uh, and shipping, like it's all done. It's all controlled internally. They're not, you know, they, don't, they don't just create the IP and then send it off to other companies to do yeah. the um, production. The only and thing now with them is that they, they, there's, I think they might have reached their ceiling and they need to expand in another way before they can. Well, that's, that's yeah, I think that's what yeah. they're trying to do. But I, I guess they are growing by selling their IP. They're going, Amazon, why don't you make a TV series with Henry Cavill? And Weta Workshop, why don't you make little uh, fancy miniatures? Or Gundam or whoever it is, uh, you know, all those toys that they've started selling. So I suppose my, my point was actually the reverse, though, is it's like uh, it's 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 why i think even if even if there are some very attractive propositions to bring in other ip and why they probably there probably is some some sort of resentment toward mespg is because it's the it's the only anomaly in that entire setup yeah, yeah. it's the only bit where they are beholden to someone where, where they're where as we've seen um their capacity to make games and profits is is it is at the behest of another company I I, yeah and in, in so I, in some ways they're kind of but um stuck in the sense that the, the game was very popular and it sort of built games workshop into the the bam off it is today because it, they made so much money in the early 2000s off uh off lord of the rings that they kind of both sort of feel and they must be feel beholden to it in some way but um i don't know anyway uh sorry carry on uh amazon did it's uh, amazon amazon so it sounds no worse than eliminator probably only alex will get that i don't know what that's in reference to it's a it's a cocktail we're talking about cocktails again oh it's nice a, cocktail. it's a, from our, from our seedy little local um uh, bar in in Leamington that we used to absolutely love, and they made this this cocktail called Lemonade Eliminator, which was basically just all the bottom shelf uh, whisk <laughs> whiskeys, all the bottom shelf liquors plus uh, energy drink plus orange juice, and it came out this sort of lime green. Yeah. Uh, and it, you'd take you know come pictures these sort of horrible dirty plastic pictures. Uh, the bar was incredible, and then they just ruined it. Rubbish, the, I, I, there was a similar place at the club that I mentioned that they have to hose things down. The, the club was called Jester. They called the the cocktail the Jesticle. So, so this cool. sounds like a very it sounds like a very similar. It sounds like yeah. we had we had basically the same same venues <laughs> in different places. Yeah, it was it was I'm, from memory. It was lime green as well. Uh, Matt <laughs> uh, says I, I've posted a picture of my battle chef on the Patreon page for the live stream. If you're interested, um, thank you very much. I will look at that later. Uh, Amazon did the same to Toys R Us. Um, perfect five out of seven of uh, memes. Okay. Uh, good old Sean Sproul, uh, one out of 1000 meme. Yeah, he is brilliant at short, uh, at memeing battle memes in middle earth. Very good way says one. Ah, thanks guys. Uh, uh says an marching Alex eat resin may have been the best thing to come out of the battle camera challenge channel. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you, you, you did accidentally swallow some bits. Also, I quite enjoyed the, the clip you posted recently teasing ahead to, um, you you cutting yourself in some way and uh, key the yes, dog. the dog being supremely completely uninterested. completely uninterested. I loved it. Sorry, the only one who painted your army thing referred to Alex winning best painted at a Legion event. Oh yeah, the only one who yeah nice. Ah. I like that. So it was actually subtly undermining your uh, your quality. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it was good. It's like it was like oh, this is something he's proud of. Let's let's just sort of tear him down. Don't, yeah, don't because you're the only one who painted. The others were painted. They had a painting yeah. requirement. <laughs> <laughs> they were very well painted, but they were painted. I just died in the gulag to listen. Uh, very good. Uh, I do hope you're talking about Warzone. Probably, but maybe not. Um, could we name Entmoot to be Lentmoot at the relevant time of the year? Oh, someone needs to meme that. Someone needs to make the meme. Uh, good, good, good gag there, Michael. I like it. My new wish list is New Rivendell Troops, uh, Gilgalad. Yeah, fair enough. We're on to their family Call of Duty night. Ha ha. Heart. TNG Productions, probably spam. Uh, Mike Bradford, uh, good to catch you guys. Great chat as usual. Uh, yep, yeah, thank you, Mike, for all the memes as well. Uh, Holzer Frangel for Last Alliance, Caliber and Bourne, other second age minis. Uh, I, the only thing I hate is the lack of support when the community is so big and amazing. So we catched up with the caught, catched, caught up with the stream. Well, so, so yeah, now we get to do the the wish list. So it, other people have sort of had their wish lists. Um, I'm I, I'm not going to go back through the things. So just say it again if you've if you've got a wish list. Um, but I, I guess the the obvious thing is to start with. Um, what would you, what would you like this year? What would 
and and again, we'll we'll move on to what we can, what we think that might actually happen. But what would you love yeah. first of all? So just, just, everyone, just, everyone just, first. Go on, get stuck in there. Th- three things. Not uh, spam, by the warriors. way. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. I, 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 I thought that was coming. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, I've never seen TNG production, so I, I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I'll, I'll have to check them out. Are they are they a Lord of the Rings channel? Um, the first is, is warriors. Is what we, we haven't we've had a few little bits of warriors here mm. and there, um, and I'm just putting that in a general bracket. You know, we've we, we've had uh, a few. Ford World stuff, which is great, like the Guard of the Gladden Court and and some um, Dunland and and the Black Dragons, whatever. Um, but but mainstay Battleline Warriors, Warriors of Minas Tirith, Goblins, that would be amazing. And certainly, certainly Rivendell Elves. They need it more than anyone else, you know, that they've got the two poses. One is that and one is that. Yeah, uh, very annoying. Yeah. Um, my, my second would be... Uh, I actually think Lertz, Lertz is in there, which I think is a, a little bit of a sideways one. The, the Lertz models are all right, but mm. he's the only villain who actually kill, who actually manages to kill a member of the Fellowship. Uh, and you know, he's he's a big bad in, in the Fellowship. He's he's one of the big bads, um, and his and his miniatures I don't think represent that. I don't. I don't he think. needs. They need. Uh, yeah, I think because they are again, um, like we were talking about the the, the elves and the, the goblins and stuff earlier. Um, the they were probably the biggest. Um, yeah, he, he's some of the, one of the oldest models, isn't he? Like Metal Lurts must have come out two thousand and one, mm. uh, I would say, or well, probably two thousand two. Certainly within the first. Yeah, and he's kind of yeah. He needs to be hefty. He needs like he does. a bit, a bit yeah. hencher, doesn't he? And a bit just um, a bit more dynamic. Yeah, and that brings I, me on to my main one. Go on. Sorry, I don't mean to, to. No, no, go on. I was finished. Oh, through. Um, it's Sauron. Sauron's model yeah. is shit. It's really bad. Like uh, I've never, I've seen some brilliant painters do the best work with him and still come up short. It's this, it's this I undynamic. I, I think, yeah, you're right. He's not very dynamic, but I think it's a cool model, and the armor is captured. I, I disagree. I think, I think it's, it's really the, nice. the, the, the the actual technical quality of the product product is is poor, and so it's uh, it's a bit of a mess. Like, like all the overlapping metals, I think they come out always come out looking like a bit. Even if you you know. Like Games Workshop's own paint job, I think it's it's just a bit of a mess, and I think the problem is because Sauron is silver, he's black, and he's got a little bit of gold for the ring. Mm-hmm. Uh, and unless you are very very good at doing some either true or non-metallic metal silvers and and, and non-metallic metal, you're nightmare that thing. It's just going to look very very drab. Yeah. Uh, whereas if they had modern plastics, the big big armor plates uh, with some very very sharp defined details, you could you know get a much much sharper contrast with like deep washes and fine highlights and, and also just simply the fact that with, with large plates you should be able to do a lot more sort of like glazing to get some um some kind of like differential shades in the, on the metals and that would look fantastic i also just think him just sort of standing there he, he just looks a bit bored he looks a bit he doesn't look interested in being yeah. where he is um and he's yeah. the big he's the big, big villain I, I, yeah. it's, it's not even how bad i think the miniature is because i take your point some people will think he's fine he's perfectly fine but I think in terms of if 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 on the left hand side you've got where you're at, uh, and your right hand side you've got the opportunity, then obviously between those you've got the opportunity cost of not having a modern miniature. Mm-hmm. And there might be other miniatures whose models are older and look worse, but I don't think they can get as high uh, up to where they to, 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 to what their potential is as Sauron is. Sauron's potential for an amazing model is enormous, uh, and so that's why I think he's the same same reason I think there needs to be a new Barog, even though the Barog is plastic. And it's, mm. and it's already had, it's one of the few miniatures in the range has actually already had two iterations just it's, because it's, it's still yeah. not an amazing model. And it yeah, could I, be incredible. You know, the, 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 yeah, you're totally right. I, I think no, you've, you've made a strong argument there. The the, the Balrog in particular, actually, I, I could, I could totally, I'd, I'd probably prefer a new Balrog, which is, as you said, there's already a plastic one, mainly because I think the, the, the sculpt is, it, it's also annoying. Like if you've ever played a game against or with a Balrog, the, the whip kind of does this, loopy doopy thing where it gets just slow enough to to get in the way of all models and so does the tail so it's just <laughs> really annoying to play with um it's a cool it's a cool sculpt and they catch i think both of them capture the the armor and the skin well in the sense that they look exactly like the film they look really good but you're right maybe maybe they're a bit more less dynamic so but yeah that's interesting you go with the, the heroes i think i think my wish list would be I'd really like there to be um, a full plastic fellowship because I'd like Boromir to get some justice because as much as the, um, uh, you know, Boromir is only in the first or a little bit in the second film, I guess, but 
he's he's one of the coolest characters he's certainly one of my favorite and he has such a great narrative of of the journey of him you know his kind of re redemption and all that and the, he's, he feels like the most almost one of the most human characters to me in the sense well obviously he's a man but also no i get he, it one the yeah he he feels like he actually you could believe him as a person and and he i don't think he's really done justice by i mean the the kind of the, the one with him with a flag feels very it's it just doesn't feel like an iconic enough moment for me it's like if it's, it's not even in the, the main film it's in the special uh extended edition but you know some some moment of him you know chopping or blowing his horn or tooting or whatever uh and uh, killing i call it tooting yeah but you know killing killing lurts uh sorry or getting killed by lurts is is a great moment um but yeah the bit where he's sort of chopping down urukai before that is just so cool even in um the minds of moria and i know those moments have been done but the first, the very first one is a very flat kind of static model that's horn. And then the other one is plastic and a bit small. It's just a bit of a shame. So I'd love one of them. And Frodo and Sam and Gollum makes perfect sense for a, a little mini kit, you know, that, that is uh, somehow connected to the Osgiliath box set. I'm amazed that it, it, they didn't release something connected to it. If, if I would, in fact, I'd be, I'd probably put my money on there actually being a kit there that they've designed that threesome to go alongside the Osgiliath set, which somehow didn't get released, because it, it would have made a lot of sense to put that in the box, um, but it doesn't exist. So that would those would be the first things. Um, I think the next thing would be just just something fresh and exciting and new and different. And I think Last Alliance is likely to uh, come up uh, under that. But I want I want a Beyonding's equivalent army to come out. So it's like whoa, this is new. This is like completely transforming the game. You know, something like Who Warns for um, the you know the the Ents. Right, uh, you you you're onto something. Uh, Ents uh, Ents could be me and Chris Powell were talking about this actually. There's there's two things I do to end. Uh, one, who wants would be awesome. I think genu I think that'd be genuinely popular. Yeah, you know, something like really something really like a beyond list where you actually get to your yeah. your set points level. And the second yeah. thing that Ents need, and that, that would be a much much more straightforward change. Um, although it, now that War of Ro War and Rohan has come and gone, it seems unlikely. Yeah, would have been purchasable extras in the, in a very similar mm -hmm. main uh, manner to Mummock. You know, Mummock could have tusk weapons the, and thick hide and, and things like that. They did it in an old white dwarf as well. There is uh, somewhere ah. out there, there is a, there's like an upgrade. So you can turn one, an oak tree, for example, was stronger, I think. And then See there that, was and that makes birch, birch, which is little, quicker. Little or, upgrade, so you can actually round up your points. Yeah, That's, I agree. yeah. I didn't know that was in a white dwarf. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. It would be. Oh, it would be many, many years ago. But they are actually. Really, you could probably Google it and find out. Uh, find out. But that's really good. Um, I, I'm going to apologise to TNG uh, Productions. I've just uh, while you were talking earlier, I, I had a quick look. There's loads of cool stuff on there. There's like, I mean, it's a much bigger channel than this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's like all these, all these <laughs> Malifaux things, and them. there's there's like amazing painting tutorials that have got like forty thousand views. So yeah. I, I I'm so sorry. Uh, it just it just I think it's because I saw the heart. And just thought it looked, it looked, uh, yeah, it just looked. Like you know, you know, the, the hit piece is coming now. Yeah, yeah, they're going to say this. This YouTube channel just shat all over us, and uh, go and, and yeah, comment all their right videos. As well. uh, and all there's there's Middle Earth battle reports on there as well. Uh, so they still a lot of chapter point stuff. Yeah, I've just seen. I've just just looking through. So yeah, apologies to TNG Productions, and um, I'll have to um, go and apologize in the comments of one of your videos. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you for watching either way. And uh, you do say spam. How dare you? My love is scorned. So <laughs> can I apologize? Um, so there we go. Uh, so yeah. So in terms of so that's the wish list. I'll see what people are saying. Add more warrior sculpts, not replace the old ones. And um, that's interesting. Adding more. So right, I could. Uh, so I'm guessing is that filling me. in the gaps like. Uh, like the stuff that there isn't a, a model for yet. Like, I don't know, I'm trying to think of Corsair Reavers and stuff like that. Is that what you mean? Or do you just mean extras like Urukai Warriors, but also the same that we, stuff that we've already got? I don't I don't quite know. But yeah, I, I agree. More Warriors is a good shout. Plastic Hobbits for sure. You need so many, yet they have so few. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that is fair. I think Hobbits are probably unlikely to be at the top of the, top of the list in terms of re replacing them, uh, sadly. But Great to see it, wouldn't it? Matt Freeman says, give Grimbold a horse. Justice for Grimbold. And the film third and even name drops Grimbold and you can see him on a horse. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, wish list for my channel to be worthy of your GBHL MESBG content list, Harry. Harry. Uh, okay. Um, send me a message. Put it. Uh, send me a message and I'll put it on. There's a, if those people who don't know. But you told me in private that you'd be dead before you uh, put his channel on the list. So. Uh, that is no, that is completely untrue. Uh, there is a, there is a list on the Great British Hobbit League's blog, which I uh, update occasionally. 
um, to include extra channels. And I'm guessing the last time I updated it was many, many moons ago. Um, so I'll happily update and feel free. And I'll probably post it again. People comment underneath and say they link stuff. So that's good. Uh, TNG Productions, uh, who isn't spam, says, I'd love a new alert. Uh, Tom Marshall says, more end schools would be nice with some modularity, make more different styles. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Justice for Grimbolt would be good. Uh, let's see if they explored the idea of evil dwarves. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've, I've heard this in the Tolkien lore. What, weren't there evil dwarves at the Battle of the Last Alliance or something? Is that right? Or am I making that up? Maybe someone like Damien, if he's still in, will know that better than I will. But that would be an intriguing idea if if that's true in the lore. I'm going to throw this to you, Alex. Do you know that if that's true? I don't. I mean, I know that. I mean, I think it's interesting because dwarves are they're, they're not good or evil. You know, it's, it's, it, yeah. it's the game that divides them into into good and evil. But there were there were good and evil elves, and there were good and evil. It's so I don't see why they shouldn't be really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Uh, it seems very unlikely, unfortunately. <laughs> um, oh, there you go. The next comment's pretty sure evil doors are in the law somewhere in the east. Oh, there you go. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, well, they are, yeah, because they sort of sell their services. They're all they're interested in gold and diamonds and stuff, isn't it? Makes sense. Wishlist, get rid of fail cast. I practically had to re sculpt the shield of my mm -hmm. dwarf captain because of the flash. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice. I think they are slowly phasing fail cast stuff out. Um, I think, I think they, they are. They've gone to lengths. Sorry to interrupt. They've gone to lengths in the, in the old world stuff to make clear that anything that was in fine cast, even models that were previously cast in fine cast, will now be in metal. So yeah. I think that's a good indicator that they're just, it's just, they're, they're... maybe that, maybe that's one of the reasons the night of uh, the men at arms of Dalamroth, which I mentioned earlier, have been ditched and um, are, because they, they are, I think anything with a pike is, um, is, is just not ever worth having in, um, in fine cast. And I, I think most people these days, like things like the, um, the dwarf vault wardens, stuff like that, they just, you just chop them off and redo it with a, a thing. In fact, I saw the other day someone who'd, who like basically re sculpted the whole of their card of the fountain court. I mean, they were incredibly good at sculpting, um, but they'd re basically redone everything. There were so many holes and, and bubbles. I saw and that. Bubbles. I saw that yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. incredible work that they'd done. And, but you sort of think, well, why should they have to do that? That's the whole point of buying a model. They might, the, the judging from the skill of this person sculpting, they might as well have just made their own because uh, they clearly did so much. It was crazy. Um, it's the funny In thing, isn't it? I'm oh, sorry. No, Gary, go, go on. Gary, you, you have more things to say. Go ahead. Uh, Games Workshop, they, they've. You know, since they've brought the new shop out and they've um, integrated Forge World into uh, yeah. the Games Workshop regular store, they've they've marked all the old Forge World kits as expert kit. It's yeah. actually it's actually if you get new resin Forge World kits, they're fine. They're, they're, yeah, they're very they're very rarely got any issues with them. The ones they should it should be Radagast, fucking oh. fine cast Radagast on Slay. <laughs> That's the expert kit. What a disaster! A I, I mean, you, you, I know you you commented on my video um, when I was building it, and I was I literally took it must have taken an hour and a half or thereabouts. I ran out of battery on my camera while I was filming <laughs> uh, this thing because I had such an awful time building that kit. The, the okay. plastic was all war warped. You couldn't differentiate the 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 branches of the 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 sleigh with the with the flash so it's so hard to get like and then you put it together and you're gonna properly. bend it and there's no obvious pegs to like it didn't have like a hole and a peg to go into said hole it was all like a slight groove that you seem to have meant to it was just oh it was honestly I, I i was so close to just binning it if it wasn't for it being the only character that would make sense as a santa um then although having said that i did also see a chat uh, um, someone i think it was some Sam Palmer commented with a, a, a Gandalf in his cart, which would have made that was beautiful. Yeah, it was really nice as well. I should have done that instead because yeah. yeah, that thing was awful. Uh, interesting point. And um, into the West. Um, <clears throat> welcome along into the West. Uh, along the same lines of a new Sauron or Balrog model would be amazing. The Watcher could be so much better too. Yeah, I don't know why I have it handy. My um, uh, my watch in the water is i think genuinely much better it's the old old thing with the metal tentacles what do you think to a new watch in the water and i'll go and show you my else. uh i i it, not massively interested um but i get the point i think it's another model that could be an amazing sort of big centerpiece model i mean sauron the balrog is so iconic and so you know sauron particularly obviously like i say is the is the big main villain so, but that's just personal taste, you know. I, I'm not particularly interested in the watching water, but I can't. I completely get the point and why other people would be. Um, I suppose it's it's similar in a similar way to to the regular dragon, like the regular the the the, the cave drake, whatever yeah. it is. Looks nads. It looks awful. Yeah, it I mean, there's so many better it. dragons out there. But, it's not in the films, and, and I, I don't yeah, really care. Which is I fine. Mean, it, but I think I think realistically, if you, if you want to use a cave drake or a dragon, just just get a get another dragon and put it on the same size base. Exactly and this right. is my this is my watch in the water. So it's. 
the tentacles. So it's the old. These were. I think they were released in metal um, briefly many many moons ago. And so what are they? What are they cast in now? So uh, no, they they are they, they don't exist anymore. They were they were. I, they, I think they were designed for just the scenario that you used to be able to play in. What, the tentacles. Uh, yeah, yeah, the metal tentacles. Yeah. So, so if you buy the water in the water now, what do you get? It's a horrible mess of a like a lobstery type thing. Just have a, have a, you have a look on while I'm describing it. But this, um, mm -hmm. you can, I I don't know whether you can still get these, but you used to be able to get them on eBay. This this face, which someone had made a plaster cast mold of something. I don't know what they designed or they'd either designed it and they sold it themselves. Um, and you can get that, and it looks so much more like the actual Watcher in the Water in the film because you know you don't have all this weird tentacly nonsense. So I, I I did that, and I I did a resin pour, and I you know filled it with uh, with with resin, and you've got like drips coming off the tentacles and stuff like that, which I really enjoy. I've never used it in game, um, especially after playing against it a couple of times, which is absolutely horrendous. Um, but I, I I like that better, so I don't think I'll unless they do something incredible with it. I don't think I'll be changing my one for for uh, the original. But yeah, what do you think? I've, I guess you're looking at it now. Um, what do you? Yeah, think? I, I, again, I'm just not. It's it's a weird model. Like it's yeah. not 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 in its design, although it's a bit weird. But like it's a weird model to to, to have in an army. Like yeah. this, you know, uh, the, the Moria list is strange anyway, don't you think? Because it's like, mm. why is the Balrog a more the Balrogs doesn't lead the goblins. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. They run away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's, it's like. Uh, so it's. 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 I, I get why they've done it. I, I would do exactly. I'm not saying that they, that it should change anyway. So I think that that's how you've got to do it. You know, more yeah. has got to have a big, a big sort of lure to it, and and, and that's the Balrog. Mm. Uh, otherwise, how would you bring the Balrog? But but it's it because that's what the Watchers list. The Watchers in the, the Moria list, right? Yeah, yeah right? exactly. Yeah, same um, sort of thing. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, make it's, sense anywhere else. It's like, I've, you yeah. know, I, I, I'm king of the goblins, and I brought with me my Balrog, and I brought with me my big ancient tentacle monster. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It makes no sense, but a, a cool idea uh, into this. Just so you know, a uh, five minute warning, and um, we're probably going to have to wrap it up uh, in the next few minutes. So, um, uh, well, final thoughts. Final thoughts. Uh, the new fe the fellowship kiss is plastic, according to the website. Yes. Um, uh, this is a this is a foolish foolish thing you've just said uh, because that is the <laughs> the, the poor quality. Um, it, it's like the bin quality uh, fellowship of the ring they made for a Minds of the Moria box set, and it's the one that you get for free in basically any um, kit these days. You know, they did a Minds of the Moria game, like a board game, and they really are the quality. Like I would compare the the quality of those miniatures to the set to the ones that you would get free in like uh, not like Risk or or the Cluedo, you know, the characters in Cluedo, it's like them. They're really not very good at all. Like, they're properly crap, and they're the wrong scale. Um, I, you just just bin them. Just bin them. Uh, they're not very nice. Um, but, yeah, that's that. I think when you look at it, oh, unless you're saying it's because they're old, it's not. they're not just old. They are by far the worst plastics in the range, I would say. See, that, that's, that, and that is a shame. Cause that, that's, that's a thing yeah. where, like, it's so central. Like, the Fellowship. Mm. Before you can buy them, else, like you get them I've, right, you know? <laughs> I know. I've seen people do decent work with them, and but they just feel a little, little more compact than every other miniature. And the Middle Earth range is renowned for being a little smaller anyway. So, um, yeah, I just think they're rubbish. Um, now you have me thinking sculpting uh, and converting a Sauron. I'd love to see that, Sean. Absolutely, mm. no need to apologize. Says TNG. Love both your work. Well, thank you very much. I'm I'm yet to discover yours, but I'm excited to try it out. Um, love for Arno says uh, I I weeing I weeing I weeing. <laughs> Funny uh, I, I wing. Well, yes, uh, yeah. Love for Arno would be nice. Um, they're a cool. They're a cool concept in the game, aren't they? So it'd be really nice to see either the miniatures back in some way. I just think just fill the goddamn range. Like I'm quite happy with the stuff there is. At least get them on the shelves and and do that, and then then you can start, you know, introducing new Arnor models and stuff. Forge World Swan Knights Dolamoth with the different heads and or banner and horn options. Do folk like this approach for warriors? I do, and I, I do. The 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 Swan Knights of Dolamoth are gorgeous models, so it makes a lot of sense to do something like that. I don't know about you, Alex, but have you ever seen these in the flesh? They're so nice. Uh, I don't know that I have actually. No, I don't think I have. Uh, they are they are really really gorgeous models, and um, I, I guess of course the downside is the, the as we mentioned earlier, you either get Forge World six Forge World models for forty quid or something like that, or twenty four for thirty quid or something like that. So it's it's the cost, isn't it? But personally, yeah, I'd, I'd like good quality models. Um, as well but who knows prior to replacements for metal and fine cast models says law forge yeah I yeah they should, i think they could do that why well, i don't know why they wouldn't unless they've lost the old molds for for the metal models or that because they thought oh we don't need them anymore because we've got fine cast 
they should just use those instead. And I think I thought I, I, I took that. I took I don't know, clarify law forward, but I, th- I took that comment to mean as in like those are the models we should be replacing first. Oh well, yeah, maybe that is the case. But both, yeah, I, I, yeah, that would be true. I mean, extras so the army doesn't look copy and pasted. Yeah, yeah, extra minis would be good. That just yeah, especially for like hobbits or you know any of the other ones that have like very few like think of the the ruffian army god there's a lot of ruffians to paint and there's only four poses um law force says more flushed out armies flashed out uh, fleshed out probably he means that only have two or three unit options yeah it'd be nice to just get an extra elite option for most armies would be nice wouldn't it um damien will probably tell you that evil dwarves started out as cats in the early drafts <laughs> that's a reference to a stream where he talked about uh, for halloween um apparently um a lot of uh, evil characters started out as cats in the Tolkien world. Like he did a whole story about, um, I think it was vampires and stuff, and it included like evil cats. I, I, yeah. you, it, it's weird. It's it weird. weird stuff in the early ages. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, was it was it's, it's like Sauron took the form of a he took the form of a, a man, a vampire, and then a dog. Yeah, I think that's uh, it. Yeah. I mean, I would love to have come across dog form Sauron. I mean, yeah, exactly. And, and, and I think there's werewolves at one on. point and, as well. So, you know, it'd be cool to see. Dog Sauron. Oh, you should have called him Sauron. Imagine shouting, Sauron! Sauron! <laughs> he's running off. Uh, regarding the last alliance, alliance says something like, except for, all, except for elves, all living creatures were present on both sides in that battle. Interesting. Yeah, I, I knew dwarves were there on the good side. I wasn't sure whether they're evil ones, but that's interesting. Um, so that makes sense. Minquista, Radagast, I was up for the challenge, but gave up and gave it back after like five Yeah, minutes. he did. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that in the video. God, it was awful. I don't blame you for giving that one up. Why would you? It's, it's just horrendous. It really is. Uh, Sean Clark says, Finecast at the time of fantasy was during the dark times of Finecast. Makes me wonder whether the change in material for the old world is mold related, not necessarily a damning of the material. Eh, could be. No idea. It, it's funny that the, the last fine cast model, I, I remember them actually releasing. Mm. I the, the last time they released a model in anything other than plastic that I can recall. Yes. Yeah. Severina Rain for 40k for the for the Imperial Guard list. And I remember thinking, well, it's 20, whatever. It was, it was you know, it's only, not that many years ago. Um, and I thought, it's fine on cast, but they've got to, you know, they've, they've purposely designed this. And it's after all the criticism of fine cast, they've yeah. got to put it right this time. And trying to make the the head was like one piece and it's meant to slot into the body. And it was just, they were just different shapes. They just, <laughs> they just one didn't fit. The, so I'm a build, building it and her neck ended up looking like it was like a foot long, but the head sort of precariously balanced on the end. I was just bend it. It's like, I don't know. I yeah, understand. that's the thing, isn't it? It's just so frustrating. I think, um, I know some people, uh, I think Matt Davis, who makes Generation Shift but, uh, bases, he said a few times that he likes some of the Elven cavalry models because uh, they're in fine cast and they're some of the easiest to convert because they're soft cut. So, I mean, I'm not a massive conversion person. I don't I do not do a lot of converting myself, although occasionally I've chopped heads off and swapped arms around and stuff like that. And, and I guess resin would be easier to do than um, cutting metal stuff. And I've, I've cut a few metal models up in my time. So I guess that's one of the positives, but... Really, if you just want a miniature that works, it, metal seems to be the more logical option generally. Uh, I mean, it's, it's real, to us, this, this, this is a symptom of exactly what I'm talking about. MESBG having a much higher tolerance for older, shoddier mm-hmm. models than other. There, there are other game. Most of the gaming communities, including those of Games Workshop, but particularly you know those of, of other systems, they wouldn't be having this. It wouldn't be like this. Oh, should we have metal or should we have a uh, fine cast? It'd just be like. Well, we, we just get plastic models, don't we? That's yeah, what we have nowadays. Yeah. We've, got, well, we've got nice plastics, right? But I mean, uh, to counter that, I've I've recently picked up a few um, Warlord miniatures. I mentioned the Perry miniatures uh, earlier for for my pikemen, but I've also got. Um, I I just maybe I probably will never actually build or paint them, but I've got some Napoleonic stuff because I really like the Sharp TV series, and I thought I'll build some of them. And quite a lot of them are in metal, um, and they're like current and they're nice. They're quite nice models. I mean, I also mm-hmm. got some. Irish pike models for at my um, uh, for in, in case the Perry miniatures ones didn't turn out well. Um, I thought, well, I'll get some backups because uh, I need them for a tournament soon. And uh, they are really not very nice comparatively to the plastic. So it, 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 I guess it depends on the, the model. But I mean, n- night miniatures, I think it is. Uh, they're, oh yeah, they're yeah. A new, a new uh, game for Game of Thrones. So the last one was based mm. on. Of fire and had nothing to do with the tv series yeah the new one is, is based on the tv ip so all the characters are like the tv series and they're releasing some new some, some their, their first sort of teaser models um and then all the rest of the range will be in plastic 
Yeah. But these these new ones are in metal, and they're like, if you you know, if you if you're an early supporter, you get the you get the metal ones. And everyone basically just told them to go fuck themselves. You know, really? all the comments were like, like how, basically, how dare you release metal miniatures <laughs> in this this day and age for an IP of this size? Um, and uh, and they and they had to come back. On, if you look at the social media, some of the, some of the like Facebook adverts, they've replied like these these models will be in plastic. Um, this is just if you want to get your hands on them early, you'll get them in metal. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I, I yeah, I did see an advert for um, I think it was it Rob from uh, yeah he, the, Rob Stark, and it it looks good. It must be said they they, yeah. they do look nice. It'll depend on the game, but I'm I must I'd admit if it, the rules are good. I'd be tempted. But, but I, I the equally you could you could just use these new models in the Song for Ice and Fire game, which I understand is a very well constructed game. So if you switch them over that would that would probably work so interesting uh, yeah, i think they're on a slightly different scale but um <sighs> you can, you can probably make exact thing I, I think they're ranked up aren't they in um song for ice and fire so they are, yeah and they, and they all, you don't build them at all they all they all come in a single piece like you, oh. you get you open the box and they're all in a single piece but they're like their arms can move but like as in you don't glue them they can they're like toys you can move them down oh really uh, oh. yeah 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 and they're, and they're all and the bases are like molded into the rest of them so i think if they're, if they're the wrong size it's very hard to make them rank up Oh, okay, interesting. You could probably do something with it anyway. Uh, that's that's interesting. Uh, where else? We got Master Ball UK who just joined us. Okay. Um, I think you, you've sadly joined at exactly the wrong moment. With this will be the last few minutes. Um, but <laughs> I, I, thanks for joining us anyway. Feel free to catch up late uh, and this stuff from earlier. And resistant for magic for Kazadum Heroes Army bonus in the law. They are naturally magic resistant and thought this would be a better fit for the faction. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. That's it. That's that's an interesting. I mean, I I think. It would be cool to see sort of alternatives from the army rule book, like the you know, currently we've got a rule book. It'd be nice to see like a, a different kind of dwarf, you know, from mm. the Blue Mountains or something like that, that maybe could have natural magic resistance or something like that. That would be cool. Um, I don't I, I do quite like the the dwarves in general at the moment though. I then they're pretty good. But, but yeah, it's interesting uh, uh, wishing for sort of changes in the rules because I, I I think the main issue with the game at the moment is not necessarily the change of the rules, but but just the lack of miniatures available for for lots of different things. The the rules are pretty solid. Although I, I guess it'd be nice to have something and uh, something to mix up the the meta, so we're not just seeing the same sorts of armies uh, kicking about all the time. But um, yeah, that's that's that, that will presumably too. hopefully happen once we get our, our last alliance uh, uh, supplement. Yeah, I think that realistically, I think we're going to see in the next. If anything comes out in the next six months, which I think it should do, I think we'll per personally, I think we'll see um, Frodo and Sam. Uh, and Gollum at Osgiliath, maybe Boromir um, separate, maybe Boromir and Lurts in a plastic set. I think that would make a lot of sense. Whether or not they'll sell them together or not, I don't know. But it'd like to see thematically opposed ones. Um, and and I would and I think Gilgalad and some other Last Alliance stuff is is almost certainly on the cards. But that's yeah. it. That's what I would I would bet on. I put my and I bet they'll. I bet you'll get. I bet Rivendell will get. Uh, much potentially to your your satisfaction I mean, it seems to be a theme that when they're doing that kind of thing that forge world creates a, a new elite yeah. or, or replaces an elite choice with a, with a couple of fine cast models i wouldn't be surprised to see um something like a gilgalad set with um the option for king's guard they fight six versions of the rivendell warriors which mm. conveniently would look like rivendell warriors and be in maybe plastic or resin and they could be used I mean, I, I, to I would eat the ass out of that basically yeah, <laughs> yeah i mean just thinking like the black dragons um for the eastlings force they're they're, they're basically eastling warriors but much better so it'd be cool to have them and um, or something like that there you go uh so as a couple just a couple more comments uh, fat hobbit gaming gideon you just got back home enjoyed watching chase tonight well done harry commiserations on the couch yeah can't be helped can't be helped um uh, feel free to well, good. if you if you knew more things then Sorry. <laughs> You're right though. So uh, Balrog uh, better or I like, oh, this is an interesting choice. Balrog Warband for Fall of Gondolin. A warband of Balrogs. I mean, if you yeah, I mean a different an alternative Balrog, maybe that would be interesting. Master Ball says I'll catch up. Fair play. Hope I hopefully see you both in February. Meet rematch, Alex. I don't know who Master Ball is. Do you know who Master Ball is? Uh, I do. I do. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you embarrass me like that? It sounds like it sounds like oh, a, a rematch. Someone you played in uh, a previous game. Anyway, uh, well, Master we, had, Ball, we played last year at. Um, it sounds like a GP. Um, it fits in February. Yeah. 
Anyway, we'll see you at the GP, whoever you are, Masterball UK. I'm sure you'll comment if you're quick enough. Uh, got a fly. Great stream, yeah. Harry slash Alex. Thanks, team. Matt. And the dwarves How need some legions in, and some it. love, says Ads. Yeah, sorry for dropping you in that. Uh, Nathan Alex, lol. Nathan Thank Alex? Yeah, yes. Okay, fine. Nathan Alex? Or is it just Nathan Alex? It's lol. just Nathan, yeah. Nathan, Nathan, Which Nathan? Alex. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, is it? It's not. It's not Nathan Talbot, is it? So. Um, no, it's Nathan. Um, uh, I can't remember the name. I've got it on Facebook. Let's have a look. Uh, I played anyway, him first game last year. He does a very excellent Gollum impression. <laughs> well, there you go. Nathan died. Nathan died. Nathan died. God, that's that's. Awesome. <laughs> Don't. Yeah. We've had quite a lot of second name uh, uh, comedy banter in this uh, this episode. So anyway, uh, I think that's it because I'm, I'm imagining Mrs. P is uh, is getting into bed next door. And will be soon sending me text messages to my phone saying, shut up, stop talking, go to bed, that sort of thing. So you get that a lot though, right? Yeah, indeed. <laughs> indeed. Uh, but thank you so much, Alex. Um, I, I do hope that you've enjoyed the uh, the stream, everyone. Uh, thank you, Alex, for joining. It's been fun. Uh, a good two hours. I do I do intend to do more streams like this. Um, but uh, certainly this year, I hope I'm aiming to go to fewer tournaments. So uh, these hopefully will will make up for um, the lack of podcasts that will come from that. But I said that last year, so who knows? So why we'll are you what aiming to go to fewer tournaments for? Well, you know, life generally. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm now married, so uh, the missus might actually want to see me occasionally. Um, why although, that, why, why, <laughs> that's the for her, to be honest. <laughs> uh, indeed, indeed. But uh, yeah, I, I, that that might be the case, I, and I'd certainly like to uh, like to do more because I enjoy them. Anyway, uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining, and to Alex. Uh, I will see you on. Was it Sunday? Your live stream is Sunday at six thirty. I think it's Sunday is at six thirty. That and that is going to be primarily about the well, we're, um, we're we're building and making our old world miniatures. I've got some wood elves to do. Excellent, excellent. And I, I, I'm still close to tempted because my two armies back when I did fantasy were Tomb Kings and Britonia. And oh, I was always I was very sure. sad. That, if, you are, yeah. if you are interested in a in a sort of slow grow kind of setup and we could do some content together, put in the comments oh, if no, you No, no, not content, that. not content. No, oh. I can't, I can't, I can't do the content. I could do the game and enjoy the game. I'm, I'd be, resp I'd be, ha what if Happy I did to... the What if you just uh, if I was I, if I was a, if I was a part and I was a face or whatever, then maybe You've got a beautiful face. People on, people will. I'm gonna I'm gonna start a campaign. Um, <laughs> anyway, sorry, I'm gonna let you go. No, you no, you're right. I, I, the thing is, it all it would take is a few more hours of badgering, and I'm pretty sure I would cave. But um, oh, well, yeah, <laughs> the thing is, <laughs> that's, that's the thing is, I've just I've just picked up the 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 the, the models for the. Um, Napoleonic stuff, and I really like them as well. But realistically, I'm never going to play that game. So who knows? Oh look, there we go. Join us. Yes. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Come on. All right. Oh, uh, I, I will ca ca call it there because otherwise, people actually might um, convince me. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Alex, uh, and everyone else. Thanks for watching. Um, until next time on the new, newly rebranded re Entmoot uh, YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and Battle Camper. I'll see you on Sunday. Cheerio. Bye.